Hello everyone, welcome to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And we're here to play The Witcher, uh, Old World. Are they gonna call the second edition the New World? Meh, meh, meh. <laughs> Took me all morning to figure that one out. No, I'm just kidding. Hello everybody. Hello, how's it going? Welcome, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I apologize in advance. <laughs> if you've been here for a while, you know what's up. Hello everybody. Hello, hello. We're gonna play live today. We're gonna kind of explain the game a little bit. Um, but the rules for this game, it's not that complex. This is kind of a pretty simple game, actually, dressed up in a complex Kickstarter overproduced package. Uh, it is based on the Witcher franchise, but it happens before the Witcher books, is my understanding. I haven't read the Witcher books. I've only watched the first couple seasons of the TV show, so keep that in mind. Uh, and hello to everyone watching live. Hello, hello. to you watching later. Uh, thank you to these folks for supporting the channel. So full disclosure... Uh, we purchased this game, backed it on GameFound. We backed like one of the lower pledge levels. So we got like the deluxe box and some Kickstarter box of extra crap. Uh, we did not go all in. This was not provided by the publisher. We're not being paid by the publisher to play this. Most of the games we play on the channel, we play independently. We're supported by these people right here and you who throw super chats our way and donations and things. So thank you for allowing us not to you know, be forced to play whatever all the time and be paid by publishers because in that case, then it's just, you know, but whatever. We appreciate you letting us do it how we do it and, and much appreciated. So all the feedback, everything I say, it's not usually affected by that stuff anyway, but just so you know, I'm open, I'm honest here. So if you spend a whole bunch of money on this game and it's your favorite game, you think it's the best game ever made, I might say some things about it that you might not like. So go away if you don't want to hear real talk about a guy who plays a bunch of board games and maybe doesn't like certain things. But again, it's just my opinion, so who cares? But I'm going to show you guys this game. We're going to explain this game. We're going to do a full playthrough, and at the end, we'll kind of give some feedback. I'll let you know my... I think there's like three things that bug the hell out of me about this game. Oh. Spoilers, most of it I, I like a lot, so stay tuned. I'll try not to give it all away till the end, but it never happens. Because it always irks me during the play. But They'll uh, be able to see if they can pick up on those yeah, things yeah, as yeah. we play. Yeah, I don't yeah, even yeah. know what they are, actually. So there you Maybe go. One. So just letting you know, anyone new here, that's the deal with the channel. That's how we roll. That's how we're different. Uh, also, got some more comments lately about, you know, less talk, more gameplay. I always have to address it like twice a year, maybe, where someone new to the channel doesn't understand we're not the normal content creator. If you're looking for a super concise rule video, Google it or make it yourself. Uh, if you're looking for a super concise playthrough video that just literally shuts up, plays the game, doesn't talk and gets to the end and shows you a score or whatever, uh, go somewhere else. That's not what we do here. There's yeah. too many channels that do that. Uh, also, if you're looking for just a review on the game, you just want to know our thoughts, either scrub to the end, but most of them we sprinkle in the middle so that you can't cheat. Um, but go look for a review and go look for someone else's opinion you care about or do your own research and come up with your own opinion and buy your games based on that, not what someone else tells you because uh, it's your situation. Only you know if you should buy the game or not. And uh, yeah, so we're going to talk. We're going to have a live stream. We're going to hang out with our live audience. Just like if you were to go to a board game store, you're not going to come in that board game store, sit down with players at a table, never talk, unless it's a certain game you're not allowed to talk in, because those exist, right, to combat alpha gaming. Um, but we're going to play this game. We're going to talk, explain our decisions. We're going to have fun with the chat. We're going to make fun of things. We're going to side rant. We're going to look up other games. We're going to do stuff. We're live streaming. We're hanging out at board game night, just like if you were to hang out with some friends at board game night and play a game together, talk about the game after. That's what we do here. So deal with it. Yeah, if that's not what you're looking for. You can leave now. Yeah, Before just go. I just saved you time. <laughs> yeah. Go somewhere else. But the beauty is you can scrub. So YouTube allows you this cool little feature that you can skip ahead till you see gameplay happening on the table. And if we start talking about something, you can scrub again, you know? So it's beautiful. So, But I appreciate the feedback about Less talk, more gameplay. Uh, yeah, whatever you say, boss. No problem. <laughs> Let me just adjust my eyebrows here. Anyways, thanks for stopping in, and uh, we'll see you later. Yeah, we're not trying to be like every channel on the internet. So, uh, yeah, there's me too many of too many of the clones. Uh, we'll, we'll do our own thing here. This is Rob's gaming table, not... Uh, I want to be like that guy's gaming table. Okay, FYI. Deal with it. All right, anyways, we're going to play The Witcher here today. Thank you for all the support. Jackpot, man. Thank you for being a member for 19 months with the Super Chat. So looking forward to your playthrough and your honest thoughts. Thank you. Krusty Turtle. Thank you for hitting the join button and becoming a member. Thank, thank you for you supporting so us here. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thanks for the support. I'll get your name in the credits eventually, but not right now. I'm too busy about to play a game, okay? And your image is a turtle. And he's, that is it's amazing. Krusty. 
It's crusty. <laughs> I appreciate it. Welcome to the thank community. You, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for the support. <laughs> Kate says, guys, people want you to talk less. Yeah, you know, yeah. Right? I just saw a couple comments like over the last like week that and I see them every, every like so often, like new people come to the channel all the time and find an old playthrough and it's like they don't realize it was live or that there was a chat and they don't understand how the Internet works and how content creation or video streaming and edited videos, how they're different and stuff. So, yeah, it's kind of funny. But I just want to address it because I know new people come every time I play a game for the first time. I forget sometimes that there's new people that find us based on every new game we play. But because right. we play so many games that we play dozens of times on the channel. So I always forget there's that like entry point and new people coming all the time. So thank you for joining us and becoming uh, our in the 18 plus thousand subscriber numbers. We appreciate it. Thank you for joining the channel. If you're watching this in the future, you're obviously above that number, I would hope. Unless I try to bribe a publisher with a b thousands of dollars to make positive content and then I lose a whole bunch of subscribers that that, that will never happen though because that's not how I roll but uh just you know if something random were to happen like that you know it, it happens in our, our hobby it's weird I've heard I've heard I've been told many times by people it happens mm -hmm. <laughs> anyways but thank you for allowing us to just do what we do we appreciate the donation uh all right lots of people kept rolling in saying hi hello to everyone hello hello no they missed their chance I said hi at the beginning I, I don't know. say hi anymore just, too bad just my turn to say hi I guess oh okay <laughs> <laughs> oh, Crusty oh, Turtle, who like is it, our <laughs> newest member, says, finally caught you guys live. Uh, you're welcome. Been watching your Too Many Bones and Cloudspire videos for a while. Wow. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. Thank nice. you. Thank you. Glad to have you live. Yeah, I'd like to make more Too Many Bones videos if I uh, <laughs> had my new content, but... <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get started. <laughs> now, full disclosure on that, Chip Theory Games did reach out and offered to send me some of the latest Too Many Bones stuff like a month ago, but they usually take like a month to ship stuff to Canada. And I thought my game found pledge would have shown up by now. But in Canada, anyone who knows, the shipping has been rolling out over weeks and they literally only ship like 50 copies a week, it seems. And they save the bigger pledges till the very end. And my pledge, I literally ordered almost one of everything. So except for like some logbooks, but those logbooks actually didn't arrive. So people who ordered logbooks have to wait even longer. And because my order was larger, it actually is one of the last ones to go out. So I haven't heard anything about my order, but supposedly I'm in the last few hundred of Canadians to get their order. Hopefully I'll have in the next two to three weeks. Sucks. But yeah, uh, yeah every time I hear too many bones, I just like tense up a little bit and I'm a little frustrated. But I said no to Chip3. I'm like, guys, don't send me the game. I already have it coming. I already paid for it. You don't need to send me one. They're like, ah, we'll send it to you anyway. You can give it away or something. I'm like, but by the time you guys send it, I'm going to have my own copy. It'll be too late and I won't be playing your game anymore. I'll be on to something else. Let's just not do that. Your, your shipping isn't exactly efficient and precise so yeah we'll be playing more too many bones so stay tuned for that uh, hopefully after we get back from gen con it'll be here hopefully hopefully and i'll be able to play it again but uh i've been kind of excited for that dan thank you for the 20 dollar super chat thank you pre-paying for gen con beers congrats on 18k and if you got paid by the syllable you'll be a trillionaire <laughs> thanks dan, dan thank you so much dan, thank thanks. you thank you much appreciated that will be used for Gen Con beers for sure. Yes, thank yes. you so much. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, Kate, you got your too many bones last week? That's because you didn't order as much as me. That's right. <laughs> I'm a baller. <laughs> and now I look like an idiot because I bought more stuff. I sit here without my game. But I understand logistics and, and all that stuff. It makes sense to get the smaller orders out the door faster mm -hmm. so they can get to the boxes of other stuff to start assembling, supposedly. I have pictured the place they use for shipping is like, literally some dude's garage so no seriously <laughs> i know i know they, if it's free shipping like they obviously pay for the cheapest shipping possible and that's why they keep changing shipping providers all the time because they probably work out a deal and then um i know this from working in quick service you like um tell a vendor like you show them how many restaurants you have and you dangle it over their head and you sign up for a new uh agreement or deal or contract based on the potential of how many sales and how many stores or how many locations you can install their product or install their service. So you work out a super low deal. But once you get that deal in, then the next deal, you go to another company and you screw them over and you you hang the carrot over the other company and you get a nice deal. So I think that's what Ship Theory does with shipping. That's my guess, uh, is they probably go, hey, we're gonna ship thousands of things. We do Kickstarters like two, three times a year. So we're gonna ship tons of stuff through you guys. So give us a sick rate and they give them a good rate. And then after that campaign, they're like, 
that company goes, uh, we're going to need more money for the next one because things have gotten more expensive. Your games are too heavy. That was nuts trying to ship your last thing. We need more money for the next one. They go, uh, we need to go to a different provider. So that in Canada, they've been through like 12 different shipping providers over the years, and it's just a nightmare. So anyways, that's my rant on that one. Done. All right. Uh, Adam. Adam, thank you for the super so chat. Much. Yes. Here's to never getting bribed by game owners, always having great opinions, and most especially Mel. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. Jackpot <laughs> Man says, for the Gen Con road trip snacks. Oh, thank you so much. Definitely we'll put those. There's no time time. for snacks. I pedal to the metal. We're on the way there. I'm not eating for like the eight-hour drive <laughs> just because if I stop to eat, like I might lose track of the road. Or if I get out of the car, that's minutes we're not driving. So I just have a jug, you know, for the road. <laughs> And that's it. We're good, right? Just a big empty jug and, and a tank of gas. So we're good, right? But I appreciate the donation either way. Thank you, thank you. I'm just kidding. We will stop. Yes. For snacks. <laughs> uh, no problem, Brian S. Hello. Hello. Brian, I feel like you've been away for a little while. Are you back now? Is that you that was gone away for like two weeks or something? Unacceptable. Yeah, Black Shabal, it, it, but that's the same song and dance every time. Uh, so he says, Gilly touched base on that. Canada is basically a logistical nightmare. Yeah, because it's huge and everything's spread out. Understood. Yeah. Uh, but we have many companies in Canada who seem to be able to ship things no problem. And we have FedEx and UPS and Canada Post and many companies that deliver stuff all around. We have Amazon, all these things, right? So there's trucks moving stuff all around Canada, planes moving stuff all around Canada every day, all the time, 24-7, just like any other country. But it is more spread out. But I understand that's why I can't offer is free shipping. But like you get what you pay for, I guess. But every single campaign, that same, it's a logistical nightmare. The company we work with, blah, blah, blah. We had to change companies or we forgot to ship something. So certain pledges are delayed, blah, blah, blah. It's because the whole deal of where you're trying to give you free shipping and then things cost money, right? So it's just annoying being a Canadian. I, I don't care what the excuse is. It's just you know, fool me once, you know, it's, it's like over every single one, every single one, but yeah, but I do love the games. So again, once they're finally here, they're still great. So I got to just stop caring. I got to just let it, let them show up when they show up. Also, just want to say Black Cheval, thank you so much for clicking the join button as well between yeah. streams. Oh, of course. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, we appreciate I appreciate that. the support. I've been supporting the channel for a while. I appreciate always hanging thank out you. and uh, I appreciate your opinion, but yeah, you, you are right. They did say it was a logistical nightmare, but they say that every single campaign. Go look at every update. Go search Canada on all their campaigns. There's always people complaining and things missing and delays, delays. We always get it last. We always have to pay more. It's just a thing. So we're just going to complain and they're going to keep messing up shipping. It's just the, the life. That's how it is. <laughs> Jack Palmy, and thank you again for another super chat. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Says, for the Gen Con road trip, speed ticket then. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. That, okay, perfect. Thank you, that thank makes you. sense. That makes sense. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Must get to board games. <laughs> Pull over, please. And ask where you're going in yeah. such a hurry. <laughs> listen, listen. They only have so many copies of this board game at this certain booth. I need to be there to be the first one to get it. So I had to drive fast. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh okay then. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Would you like me to drive in front of you yeah, to make sure traffic's clear? Yeah, you need an escort <laughs> to your board game convention? Shut the hell up. I'm giving you the worst fine ever. <laughs> it's I'm okay. impounding your vehicle. You ain't going to any convention. Busted. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Stupid geeks. All right. Anyways. All right. Enough talk. Let's get to the game. Uh, for some reason, uh, I believe this game is uh, catching on. So this is a sign of a game. Two, two things are happening here. If you look at the rank overall, this is on BoardGameGeek.com, if you've never heard of the website. Uh, there's some kind of meaningless numbers all over this website that anyone can kind of manipulate. But the rank overall, with all the board games that exist, many, many hundred thousand board games, something, I don't know. This has already reached in the top 1,000. And it just hit retail, I don't know, like a month ago or something, maybe. Backers just got it over the last few months. I, I don't know. Well, Mel has been painting it for a while, so it could have been longer than that. Anyways, this game only came out in the last few months. It's already in the top 1,000. So that's either a sign of a super rabid fan base that loves the publisher, and they'll just rate it amazing just because they love it, or the game's actually solid. Are the two things usually what it is? Or they hate some other game in the top 100 or something, so everyone's just 
trying to get this to overtake it eventually, and that's the play. Um, but I think it's more of the game's pretty solid. But it's crazy how quickly it's in the top 1,000. Hmm. And it's not a game based on plants or animals or ecosystems. Sort or of. a haven. Or a haven. <laughs> yes. We will be in no havens. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's interesting, right? Yeah. So there's something here. I was definitely shocked. And as a fantasy board gaming fan, uh, I kind of like it. Uh, all right. So explore the continent, upgrade your skills, and fight monsters, witchers for trophies. Uh, one to five players. Supposedly the community says the best two to three. I'm assuming that's because there's much downtime for other players at the table while players are taking their turn. Not that much. When you know what you're doing. But I'm sure if a player's new to it or analysis paralysis kicks in, you know, uh, it, you might be sitting there for a while in a five-player game waiting for your turn. Uh, the weight is only 2.88. So it's in the twos. Like we, okay. I expected based on the size, the cost, the production, the expense and of, you know, the delays, all this stuff. I did watch a playthrough. I did look into this game on GameFound. I thought, okay, it looks like adventure games we played before. I didn't know what else was there. And I'm sure expansions boost, boost it up probably, I think. But I don't know. We've only played the base game. Oh yeah, and full disclosure, I forgot to mention, we've only played this game one time. We're still figuring it out strategy-wise. So don't come here looking for how to get, you know, the fastest race to the win or anything. <laughs> We're just going to have fun playing it. Uh, we think we have the rules down. So just keep that in mind. But we only played it one time. Only played it one time. So we're not experts yet. But I do plan to stream it more than one time. Because I do want to play with some expansion stuff. And I do want to play with Kyle. So if you want to see a three-player th playthrough, we plan to play it with him in the future. So hit that subscribe button. I also want to play it solo and try that out too. So subscribe. We'll do more Witcher playthroughs, of course. The more people watch it, hit the like button, all that stuff. Uh, we'll also obviously help uh, nudge us to play it a little more, if if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, so it's on the lighter end. But I think it's on the same weight complexity that most of these adventure games we played. So if you're new here, I've made like a top 10 list, I think, on top adventure games I played. I think it was a top 10. Maybe it was a top 5. I don't remember. I think it was only I last was year 10. I did that. Anyways, you can find Rob's top 10 adventure games uh, video on the channel somewhere. Uh, so I played many games like this, many that weren't even on that list. But this game, if you've watched the channel for a while or you've been playing board games for a while, the, this game falls into the category and has some similarities to the following games that come to mind and maybe many more. But these are the ones I can only think of when I was I was thinking of this morning after we played it yesterday or no, the day before we played it a couple days ago uh, is Runebound third edition. Lands of Galzir, uh, Euthia, Torment of Resurrection, the Hexplore It series of board games. It gives me vibes of all those games. It falls in that adventure category. Oh, and Skyrim. Skyrim, the adventure game also. That's the one we yeah, played probably cares. most recently. Yeah. Yeah. That, right away when we're like crack it open, I'm like, start reading the rule book. I'm like, wow, it feels like Skyrim, the, the adventure board game that we played recently on the channel, by the way. Uh, we played all those games on the channel, but... Uh, that one came to mind right away. I felt that vibe. But that one's a little more complex, I feel like. I feel like, yes. Than this. At least base game to base game. Um, Lanes of Galzir. Obviously, is more brighter, colorful. Feels a little more friendly from the cover. But it's like, no, no. There's, there's stabbing, killing, and back in, you know, poisoning people and all this kind of crazy stuff in that game, too. Um, bad things happen. Um, but the same idea, there's like making choices, adventuring around, trying to race opponents, you know, get prestige, similar to trophies kind of idea, doing quests. Um, same with Hexplore it, kind of, except for Hexplore it is co-op, fully co-op, you're all together. But the same idea, you're racing against some kind of time, trying to level up a certain amount to defeat higher level monsters to eventually fight a main boss. Um, and Runebound was the one we played... I think the longest time ago. Yeah, that's when I forgot the most. Yeah, but I do remember the same thing. Grabbing quests, moving around to different locations, had a combat system. So it's in that category. So we've played it. Hopefully that helps you understand when we're playing this game or trying to figure it out or giving our thoughts on it. That's where we come from. As we played all those games, I believe I like every single one of those. The, the Skyrim Adventure Board game is still fun, but that was like the roughest around the edges, the lowest quality one out of all those, I would say. Yeah, that's the lowest quality one. But uh, this is definitely on the higher quality level for sure. It's just like feels very simple. That's, that's the best way I can explain it. And you can see it in the complexity level there. 
2.88. Yeah. Hans also saying that it also has some um, mechanisms or mechanics from uh, Tainted Grail, which we did kind of, yeah, you did combat, say that too when we were playing. Yeah, I was going to mention that when we get into combat oh, and I'm sorry. explaining it. I would have hinted at, like, this reminds me of Tainted Grail. Sorry. But the, the Tainted Grail adventuring, I don't get that vibe from this for some reason. And, and it's more about the, like, the way the board and the chapters kind of are. That's more of like a campaign story game. This game is more just set it up. Set up your scenario, kind of, and play one off. At least base game. Mm -hmm. I don't know about expansions yet. We haven't delved into that stuff. Um, but Mel's painted up some of them, so we can dabble with those sooner rather than later. Um, but it's just single session. It's competitive by default, and uh, in the base game. And yeah, it just reminds me of those games I mentioned. Yes, there's hints of Tainted Grail, but I, I would never say like, oh, you like this? You should look at Tainted Grail. Like, no, not even close. But yes. the combat system, I think, has some similarities. Yeah, there's some hints. And yeah, moving around and reading choices and that kind of stuff. But like, yeah, that game's on a whole different level, I think, uh, in a different category. And no, I would not mention Mage Knight at all compared to this game. Not even No, I think either. they're not talking about it in that way. They're oh, talking okay. about different games that they found our channel through. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, I see up above. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, who said Mage Knight? I see Dan going, does someone say Mage Knight? No, I'm like, no. who, who recommended Mage Knight related to this game? No, 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 They're no, talking no. amongst themselves. No, 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 no. That game, yes, you're adventuring. Yes, there is adventuring in Mage Knight. It could be on the same list because it's an adventure game. But I'm trying to talk about games that are very similar. That would be like same-ish kind of complexity. They feel designed in the same scope. And that that's where I'm at. So anyways, that's our background on games like this. So... If you're interested, if you like this game, go look into those games too. Those are, if you want more of this kind of game. Or if you played one of those games, you might be like, oh, okay, I understand what they're talking about now. Okay. All right. So there's there's the game. 90 to 150 minutes. So stream time, uh, it's going to be 17, uh, no, maybe no. 18 hours. Yeah. yeah. So 18 hours of us streaming this. So buckle in. All right. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Uh, I tried my best to fit this thing in the camera and zoom in as best I could, okay? But this game has one of these boards that is way too big and a player area that is does not respect that the board is way too big. So I've jammed things together and it's laid out not the same way that you're supposed to set it up. I've put these cards in a different orientation. I've put stuff on the board that maybe you would put to the side. I put our player board with no room around it. We're going to keep our potions and trophies just wherever the hell. But this game does have one of the best components in board gaming. The dual layer cardboard. My favorite component. And behind it, it's placed to slide in cards. We're not going to do the sliding in card fun stuff like putting our trophy, hiding it up here. So this is basically a trophy saying, hey, come at me, bro. And if you can beat me, you get my trophy, which helps you get to winning the game. But I'm just going to have this lying beside us here. I'm just going to put mine in. No, no. you're going to keep it right there. Is that where my discard goes? No. Your discard will go off screen because oh, we okay. don't care about your discard. Okay. okay. We, we have to make concessions in this playthrough for us to be able to even see the board on camera or to even reach stuff on the board. True. I sat down here for like an hour this morning trying to organize this in a way where it's playable, reachable, streamable, all in one is the best I came up with. Okay. So I apologize if this does not look how it looks in the rule book or how you play on your own table. Because uh, we're trying to fit it on camera so you guys can see all the stuff. Okay? That's the play. Um, but yeah, dual layer cardboard. It's got little, little cubes. So yes, I understand there's a Tainted Grail kind of similarity. Um, and many other games, I guess, too. But uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, we're Witchers. And again, this happens in the pre-normal normal Witcher saga kind of books and show are based on, I think. Um, so the idea in this one, high level, we are witchers, we're competing, we're from different schools, okay, uh, maybe we're old school, old world, I don't know, bad jokes. Anyways, we are trying to become the, be the best witcher and gain the most trophies. Before, it's a race game, it's like a deck building, efficiency, card management, uh, resource management kind of combat adventure game where we're trying to race to have the most trophies on this little track over here, okay? So there's a little track here. There's stuff on that track. Don't worry about it. But we have our own little tokens that track our trophies. So the first person to reach the last spot on that track, that game ends, that person's the winner. Awesome, okay? 
One thing I like about this combat, and is in most of these adventure games, or, or sorry, the race, sorry, the race. One thing I like about the race in this game, uh, you, there is player, there can be, in the competitive base game, there can be lots of player interaction, or there can be none. It's up to the players and how they want to play and how they want to race, uh, which a lot of these adventure games, you can kind of do that. But you could be incentivized to mess with other players. Uh, so that's kind of cool. But it is competitive. But again, you can play it not so butting heads, which some people don't like games like that. Or you can, you know, play it where you're literally trolling each other and going after each other and trying to steal each other's money and stuff, uh, which is cool. So that's the trophy track. It's like the game points is what the race is. It's the end game condition. So we're trying to go around fighting monsters, fighting other witchers, or meditating basically becoming so good in one aspect, either combat, defense, alchemy, or, or in Mel's case, speed, which is your unique ability track. If you can get all the way up to the top in one of them, you can choose to meditate on your turn, and that can help you go up. Uh, and you can meditate, I guess, as many times as you want if there's trophies here for meditation. So there is, in a two-player game, we're going to have one of each of these trophies. And there's one for each, like combat, defense, alchemy, and your specialty. And if these are still here, these are kind of like um, kind of like the things in engine building games that you're trying to race for at the table, like Terraforming Mars and Wingspan and stuff. Trying to be the first one to grab, or maybe not Wingspan, but maybe there is. Yeah, yeah, Wingspan, you're trying to be the first on the track to grab things, right, based on the round. Um, but you're trying to grab this first. So if I reach the top of defense and I choose to meditate at the end of a turn, uh, I will take this trophy, which also, which I love, is not just a a boring old trophy for victory points it actually comes with its own ability so based on you trying to grab a certain type of trophy and they all do something different during the game the earlier you get this which is challenging you'll get a bonus and as you play the game more and more you'll start getting used to what these things are and how they help your character or don't help your character or how maybe i don't want mel to get a hold of the alchemy one because i hate when she has that one so maybe i want to race for that one so those kind of things will come into it for replayability which is kind of cool um, these don't need to be shuffled. I don't know why I did that, but they're just going here on the table. They're sitting here. So if Mel were trying to get the highest defense and then meditate on that, she would have to, she could still get to the top defense is fine, but she can't meditate and get a trophy if there's none here. That's what I'm trying to get at. So the other thing with meditating, uh, is you cannot gain the meditation trophy as your last trophy to win. It must be from combat, either winning against a monster in combat or winning against another witcher. Okay, so you can meditate, I guess, as many times as trophies are available and sit there meditating to your heart's content and literally get in no fights, I guess, but uh, the last one you can't just get by meditating, okay? Um, so yeah, all right. So that's the overall of the game, kind of how we're trying to get to points. How you do it and when you do those things, up to you. So on the game board in the top left there, uh, you can see the number one. Over here, you see the number two. Over here, you see the number three. Okay, that's uh, and there's lots of little rules, symbols to remind you what happens like after fighting, what happens at locations. Lots of symbols and reminders on the board, which I like, but I think that's what helps make it so big, which I don't like. What is the thing? Uh, but yeah, so step one, completely optional on your turn, is map stuff. And on the map, you can wander around to adjacent locations. And locations are uh, marked by little uh, terrain symbols. There is the forest symbol, the mountain symbol, uh, or the water symbol. There's even like a wild symbol with all three mixed in. But those signify locations. They're connected by these roads, sometimes connected by water with the dotted lines here. Okay, you can move to adjacent location by spending cards from your hand with the matching symbol or any two cards that don't match, you can discard to go to an adjacent location, or a card and a gold, okay? So you move, okay? On your turn, you choose to move. You can move as much as you want. You can move before or after doing actions, but you have to have the resources to be able to move around, okay? So you're moving around the board, and you're getting to locations. Why you want to go to different locations? Uh, because they have location abilities. And all these little abilities we'll kind of explain as we go, um, but they're ways of raising your stats. There's ways of raising your stats on your board. Uh, at some of these locations, you can train and spend money for them. You could just instantly get a bump uh, if you're equal to or lower than. You could play dice poker, which we'll explain, to get money. You can play against the house. Uh, you can try to track down monsters to get on their trail. 
You could, what else could you do? Just, oh, trash cards and get new cards. Many things you could do on the locations. Another thing you do on locations is fight other witchers, which we'll talk about fighting, as long as it's not at a school. So you're kind of looking for locations uh, that have this symbol on them, and that symbol basically tells you you can fight a witcher here. So the schools do not have that symbol, so no fighting witchers at schools, okay? But you can fight them out here, and then there's a little to token on the board here that you put on that symbol to show you that it, no more fighting happens there until another fight happens somewhere else. I think it's to protect the player, so you can't keep fighting the same player over and over again to try to, you know, really annoy them, I guess, I, or something. I don't know, but that's how that works. Uh, another thing, uh, locations all have a number, and that matters for questing or chasing down the trail of a monster or whatever. You might have a quest that you need to get to a certain location or go to a certain location to get information to find out more info about a monster, which helps you go first against the monster when you're fighting. Um, so yeah, when you go to a location, you can you optionally can do the location action. You can optionally play dice poker against a witcher. You can optionally fight a witcher. You can optionally fight a monster. No. Yeah, it's all optional, yeah, technically. technically. But this whole phase of moving around and doing actions is optional. Then the second phase, you must do, and you must either fight a monster, fight a witcher, explore, and exploring can you choose. You can explore the city you're in, or you can explore the surrounding wilderness or whatever. Okay, we've seen this in these adventure games. It's a common thing. And on these cards, you, the other player will read it out loud. You'll make a choice. You'll see this as we play. We've only seen a handful of these, um, but they can lead to you finding weapons, meeting people, finding um, people to join you and help you along your quest. They could get you potions. They could get you extra resources, gold or stats. They can hurt your stats. They can make you burn cards, gain cards, all these kind of things. Um, many fun little explorations in here. Uh, or you meditate. And again, the meditate thing I already explained, when you're at level 5 of something and the trophy's available, you can meditate. So that's phase 2. Three options, but there, you have to pick one of them. So again, if you're not at a place to fight anything, or you don't want to fight anything at your place, and again, you can't fight a witcher that you played uh, dice poker against already, um, but if you're not going to fight, you must explore or do the meditate. And if you're not high enough to meditate, you must explore. So explore is always there as like, you have to do something, so you'll always be exploring if you can't do the other ones. Then the last part on number three is uh, taking a card and trying to like add to your deck. And your deck is like your life in combat. Your deck is your actions during phase one uh, and your life and, and actions and, and abilities and things during two. And the deck is huge. And this is just the base game. Just the base game. Uh, we found sleeves yesterday, finally. Uh, they are some matte sleeves, so they're a little... A little blurry, but they're still fine. They do the job. But what I learned is you shuffle these cards a lot. You handle these cards a lot. So I decided to sleeve these ones. And the card stock feels like thick, nice, thick quality. But it feels very porous. Feels like uh, construction paper my daughter would have at high school. So they feel like you get any kind of moisture on them and you're going to be in trouble. We also felt like ink was coming off on our hands yeah, a little it, bit yeah. while we were playing with them. There's, it's like missing like the like plasticky kind of linen-y finish that's needed to keep that much ink on that kind of paper. Um, so I would recommend like looking into sleeve costs where you live. And there's like in the base game, like a thousand of these cards, okay? Um, but yeah, we found sleeves. I'll talk more about sleeves and, and card sizes and stuff later, but uh, just a warning, there's a ton of cards in these games, in this game that need to be shuffled and handled and whatever. So the deck is super huge. Um, and yeah. Because that's the thing nowadays. You, your, your game has to have a deck that, once you sleeve it, has, it can fall over. That's the thing. Because all <laughs> the top games, Terraforming Mars, Wingspan, Ark Nova, Earth, you know, that's the thing is like, whose deck is bigger? Is basically. Yeah, they're all trying to one-up each other, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. They like, all whip oh, out their... they had this many cards. Oh, I'm yep. going to bring in this many cards. Yep, they whip out their decks and then compare them and that has got the bigger one. It's, it's like a bad thing. It's got, they got to stop that stuff, okay? For some reason, they don't think people are sleeving it. And I don't even want to think about expansions. Please don't tell me expansions make this larger. Because uh, I don't know if I have a card holder that fits these cards. But anyways, that's there. We're going to deal out some cards. The other thing when you're buying cards from this, this pile, uh, for step three, which we'll show you as we play. It'll make more sense. Uh, is there's a cost modification. Either the cards down here. Uh, it's like kind of like a little river thing that kind of moves. Uh, but it only moves from us buying cards, but you must, this is mandatory, you must take a new card, okay? Uh, you can discard cards to your own little discard pile. This is the deck building part of the game. 
if the card is here, it's actually one cost cheaper down to zero. Cards cost, I think, zero, one, or two. I don't think there's a higher cost than two that I've seen. I think um, two plus, yeah. Yeah, or the yeah, or the card could have a plus one or a plus one. So if a two cost card is here, it's a three. So you kind of cards will work the way down, or people will buy certain cards. So there's a competitive aspect of trying to grab and trash cards out of this row to mess with players, or just trying to build your engine. Um, that's all there. And then you have three zero cost cards in there. Oh yeah, yeah, the zero cost card thing. Uh, I think they're all supposed to be at this end, yeah, right? Yeah. So we'll just pretend. We'll just slide these down. Uh, this one down, and then I'll just put these ones here. I'll just shuffle them and we'll pretend it came out in that order. But yeah, you're supposed to have, I think, three zeros down in the bottom here, and then uh, the other ones you just keep drawing until you get them. But I'll, we'll just pretend we have a discard pile, or whatever, and it's already going. It's fine. It's fine. Um, okay, I've shuffled up these a little bit, but I know I was playing with them before. So these are the potion cards. Potions will give you little abilities that you can use in combat at the start of each turn. Uh, we already talked about exploration cards. These are like, um, they're numbered. Uh, they're all in order, you know, one, two, through whatever the hell in here, 40 something cards. Um, and these are your quest cards. So based on, you know, certain quest resolutions, you'll be told to draw certain cards. Um, and those will be like your rewards on the quest or something like that. So those are related if you're doing a quest line, you'll eventually work your way to those. Uh, over here we have the monster cards during combat. The monster will draw from those cards and that determines what attacks they kind of do to you. Do you want to shoot C1 or no? No, Not it's fine. We'll okay. see it all during the play. Yeah. So it's like we'll go into more depth as we play it, right? I'm just trying to give like a high level yeah. overview of like how the game is going to flow and what we're looking to do. Uh, oh, I forgot to get metal coins uh, to replace these. But that's okay. We'll just play with these for today. You know, we have so many metal coins from different games. Like I don't need to play with cardboard, but I mean, I guess today I'll play with cardboard. <laughs> uh, okay, um, and we have our own specific starting deck that each uh, little faction. So there were five witchers, I think, in the base game. One from each of the five different schools, might be six. I don't remember, but each one has their own ten starting cards, which has the little animal symbol in the top right that matches their school. And on a card, so these are the main cards in the game, they are so simple. Like, I don't know why they're so big. I guess to show off the art, they probably paid a lot of money for. But these cards uh, have different colors and different abilities. So during combat, only these symbols matter. Uh, these symbols in the bottom matter during phase one where we're roaming around the board. There's the cost, there's the name. Uh, but there's like no words on them. So again, I don't know why they're so big. Uh, but yeah, anyways. This is damage. This is draw more cards in combat. This is like blocking damage, basically raising your shield. Um, and they're all different colors because they're, you know, certain red cards are like a slow attack. Blue cards are like a fast attack, I think, is how it works. Green cards are more defensive. Um, but we'll kind of show you in combat how that works. But basically, you're trying to connect cards and deal damage. But it's also your life. So the more cards you're drawing and making your combos and stuff, you'll eventually run out of cards because you could be getting damage to lose cards. Or you're just losing cards because you're playing them. Um, but yeah, you start off with your own little own unique deck. And I think you start with three cards, I would guess. Do you know? Three, yeah. I don't have the uh, rules set up. No idea. Ready, but I mean, again, it's like not it's so like basic, but it makes sense, which I like. It feels like it's a streamlined game already. That makes sense. I think we did all it's like it's like five pages of setup, so we're just double checking here. <laughs> I set it up for camera purposes, but maybe I didn't set up all the game correctly. Uh we do need monsters though. And is it three level ones? Or is it two level ones and level two? Two level ones and a level two. But uh it's that for is, sure. Yeah, draw two tokens. Yeah. Uh draw two tokens from the level one stack and one from the level two stack instead. Yeah. Starting so player chooses a terrain type for the level two monster. Oh, so we have to pick a starting player first. Oh, starting player. Sorry, so let's see. Action deck. Did all that. So starting player is supposedly the last person to read a Witcher book. Uh, oh, yeah. I haven't read any dice. of them. But let's just roll off. Whoever gets the highest goes first. I got the same number as you. So okay. let's roll again. Uh, Two. I go first. I got the six. Okay. Okay. So I'm first player. Terrain type. Oh, yeah. Let me put myself back at my starting school. Hmm. Do I care? I don't know. 
I'll say I want the, the two to be a forest. I don't know, forest, sure. I'm not sure why I would care, but maybe what's closer. So I flip over from the stacks. We have forest stack, water stack, mountain stack. This will find our monster it is located at number eight. Okay, and I put it on the forest little circle thing here. Uh, I find out what this level two monster is, and it's whatever this monster is. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because we have the deluxe edition, I now need to find uh, this monster in here, but it's level two, so I can skip ahead to the level two monsters. Also, the cards and gold is based on like first player, second player. Cards and gold. That oh, we, yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Oh, that's right, that's right. Night Wraith? Night Wraith. Oh, there I go. <laughs> all right, this one takes a bit. We don't know all the monsters in the game yet or anything. Um, so Night Wraith, oh, who has an ability. She has Make 14 moves. health. Okay, so this we got to know this for fighting her. She's level two. During a player's first turn, first fight turn, they play the first card in a combo randomly, then they may extend the combo. So it kind of messes with your plans a little bit. Might be this one. No. No? No. Right there on the right, I see it by your mug. See it this coming one? out of its spot. I that had one. this one first, but I thought this That's was something That's that else. one. Look. That's that one. Okay, yeah, sorry. I wish I had the number on here too. I know, some, um, of, the, some of the art is very dark, so yeah, some yeah. of it is improvised, for me anyways. So this goes at number eight, which is over here. Okay, so that monster's on the board. Uh, let's do the water one next. It's gonna be at number five, and it'll be this one, which is some kind of red flower Oh, thingy. that one I know. I wish the monsters had name tags. Jeez. <laughs> you know, they have numbers on the bottom. Why can't they put like a little yeah, tiny number? Yeah, that's just for cleanup later. It's, it doesn't help you oh, during the game. You're trying to fight them. <laughs> I know, but some of them are obvious, but some of them, there's a couple minis that are very similar to each other, maybe just like slightly different color. Um, and the one is right here, I assume. Mm, oh, is that the one? Oh, then that's the wrong Hold one. Hold on, maybe it's not the right one. There's Hold two on. that are similar like that. Yeah, yeah, it's this one. Oh, then it's this one. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Different red flowered miniature. Yeah, see what I mean? Like some of them have a very well, similar problem, look. The problem is it's the token. The token cuts off the art so much that I don't know what's happening there. But once you oh. reveal more of the art, you're like, oh, it's obviously the big bulging head one. <laughs> but they should just put the name on here. Like put the name there so I know what I'm looking for card wise or a number. But I know it detracts from the art and then yeah. they. You know, they expect you to know the lore and play the story or play the game a lot, I guess. But that's what I mean, where there's some similar art right. and stuff. So we just... fixed it. We can, we can stop <laughs> freaking out. Everyone relax. <laughs> Nobody's saying we it. have the right miniature. We're good. Uh, so this one, it's a level one. So it has only 10 health. And before the player creates their life pool, so basically while you're setting up for the combat, uh, they discard one card from their hand. Ooh. Oh, did you read the other one? I missed it, but I'll read it after. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, she basically makes you play your first card random. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Of your first fight turn. Right. Okay. Which will again show all the fighting and stuff. You'll we'll work it out as we get to our first fight. We'll walk through it and explain it. It's just easier because uh, you'll see many fights during the game. Oh, I'm sure. look at that's the other oh, one. Oh, there we need the other flower one. It's <laughs> also a level one. Oh, that's funny. Now that I see it like this, I'm like, oh yeah, clearly that's this one. That is Archispor. Archispor. Uh, 12 health. The player must discard any one of their unused potions with no effect to initiate a fight with this monster. Oh, so you need to at least have one potion before you can even wow. this guy. Where's he going, sir? Uh, he is going in mountain location number three. Oh, all low numbers. They're all up at the top. One, two. Oh, thank you, thank you. They're kind of surrounding me. I don't really want to fight a monster right this minute. Uh, and they're all kind of everywhere. Again, you can go in a location and leave a location without fighting a monster. They're not really blocking anything, which is what I would think would happen, but it's not that way. You choose when you want to fight them. Um, and when you got all the cards, the monster's done. Okay. And then what's the gold? I'm first player. So You're first player, so you get three cards, two gold. Three cards, one, two, three, and two gold? Yep. And then I'm second player, so I get five cards, four gold. Okay. Any Gorgon vibes? Yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanted to shuffle that, but yeah. one, two, three. But again, a, a lot of like the little nitpicky complaints I'll have are kind of solved once you play it a handful of times. Like, you know. But again, I always look at it from the new player kind of perspective. It's got the Witcher license, right? People are going to see the Witcher show, read Witcher books, and then maybe find out about a Witcher board game and get into the hobby based on this game. 
it's not that complex, but it's like, you got to think about, you know, sometimes usability, because it helps people teaching the game, helps players understand and not be frustrated. So just little choices sometimes can be a roadblock for people learning. And I hate spending more time online looking up rules than I need to. Okay. Uh, but the game does have, which I have to shout out for sure, uh, it gives two reference cards per player to explain combat, which we'll walk through that later, and how the fight turn works and what, what the symbols on cards mean. That's great. Love it. Okay, all these little things on the board, they're kind of confusing, but once you read the rules and kind of study them and understand the little symbol language, they're pretty helpful. But again, they're not too intuitive. Like, they don't make sense. Like, kind of like a Garfield game, right? Full of symbols. And it kind of just makes sense usually when you look at it. You're like, oh, I get what that's, that means. Pretty much in most cases. But this game, I was like, oh, I'm, I don't know why they chose those symbols, but sure, I'll believe it. But it kind of makes sense once you read about it and you play it a few times. There's the player's turn. I already explained all that stuff. I think I've explained everything, but you can pause that, look at it if you want. Um, but it's super helpful for teaching and reminding and streaming, especially when you get distracted by your awesome community and forget where you were and what you're doing. But uh, And then there's dice poker stuff, which I think dice poker will show off when we get to it. Because mm -hmm. it will happen. It will like, happen. We'll do it yeah. at least once. Whether it's playing dice poker against the game or against another player, it should happen. Um, but there's the rules for it, and uh, we'll we'll go after. Oh, and those aren't. Oh, the rules. that's just the rankings. Just the results. Sorry, these are the after the fight rules, which are not on the fight. Or I see they the fighting rules spread out to two cards. Okay, beautiful. Oh, I guess so that you can have it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Okay, are we ready? I think so. You're first. Did I explain everything on the boards that matter? Um, uh, your shield should be at one, I think. Oh yeah, sorry. I did that last time too. It should be. Okay, let me just... I just automatically put everything to the bottom. I know I, I kind of described what was going on, on the board. The board's really basic. It looks more complicated than it is. Um, again, it's kind of like everything about this game feels that way. No, we're kind of fat heads covering everything, but that's fine. On this board... Uh, actually, let me just do this. On this board... Uh, you have art, you have a place to put your money, you have a place to put your trail tokens. We'll explain trail tokens when they happen, but that's basically that, that what I talked about tracking down monsters. They're just face down location tokens, helps you track down monsters, you put those there. Uh, you have a shield value, the shield will go up and down as you play, starts at 1. Your defensive level goes up, you get to raise this up. During a fight as you get smashed, this goes down. Sometimes effects in the game will force it to go down, like side effects from potions or quests or battles. Um, and you can raise it. There are some effects that actually boost it during combat, but your default level is equal to your current level. And this is your level right here. It says level right on it. I could probably hold it up. At, that'd be better. Your level's right here. Okay. Marked by this little cube. Uh, and even reminds you when your level attributes are at least one above your current Witcher level. So that's how you level up. It's super basic. Once you get the cube on all your stats above your current level, your level goes up and you get to draw cards. Usually it's one, then it becomes two as you get higher level, okay? So this defense is just matters in combat, but it does go up and down even outside of combat. Combat, this basically just helps you draw a certain amount of cards at the end of a combat turn. So it makes you better at combat. The more cards you have in hand, the more cards you can combo off and build chains and do bigger attacks and abilities and be a cooler witcher in combat. So that's what you want. You want that to go up for that reason. This one, uh, it just reminds you that you move this defensive thing up one every time you level up. But again, your your standard defense level is equal to this your, level. Your oh, defense oh, oh, level. Defense level, yeah. defense level, sorry. Defense level, my bad, my bad. So your defense level tells you where the shield should go after combat's over, basically. Alchemy... Uh, every time that goes up, you get to draw a potion. Obviously, it's related to potions. Um, and it basically tells you the limit is equal to uh, the level of how many tro uh, potions you can play in a single combat. So if I get up to level two or three, for example, on three, I can play up to three trophies in a single combat. I can only ever hold four, which is kind of reminds you that you can only ever play four potions in a combat. But you can play as many as you want in a turn. This is just the limit for the whole fight. And you know that because as you play them, you flip them over. And then at the end of the combat, you clean them up. So that's how you know if you've meet, meet your met your max. Um, but as you level up, you get to draw an extra potion, which is nice. My special for this Witcher from the school of the Griffin, House Gryffindor, uh, is magic. Okay, 
And it reminds you what that ability is here. It reminds you through symbols. So the board is kind of big, but it, ex it explains everything, which like is so new player friendly. I have to shout it out. It's annoying for being a table hog, but everything's on here, right? Uh, so have a big table if you're going to play with like four or five people, just FYI. Uh, and this is for wagering. Okay, I guess I should go over my special while I have this up. Once per fight, you may perform your magic specialty to draw one card from the top of your discard pile, then discard zero to two cards from your hand based on whatever this says. And, uh, and at level four or five, look through your discard pile. So that's what this eyeball reminds you. That's a discard pile symbol. Um, and then you pick any one card to add to your hand. Okay, so that's what it's saying. This is saying, look through your discard pile, add a discard pile card to hand. This says add a discard pile card to hand, but then you have to discard two cards or one card. So it kind of reminds you what your ability does. And every Witcher has their own unique specialty. And Mel's one, I'll hold that up actually Well, we're here. Thank you. And what's yours do? Speed. What's it do, Mel? Once oh. per fight, during the first fight turn, you may perform your speed specialty to draw cards from your deck and possibly return some to the top of the deck in any order. Okay. So as I get stronger, I can return, I can look at more and return more. So I can kind of put cards on top of my deck that maybe are future combos. Okay, so Mel's going to win today is what I said. Basically looking at both those abilities, <laughs> Not necessarily. Mel officially picked the better Witcher. I just want to pick a Witcher I haven't played yet. I, I did the and same. And I love yellow, so yeah. that's why I did it. I didn't really read this ability before I set up today. but I wanted to do the same and I don't want to pick. No, it's, they're still probably yeah. both good. I'm just joking, but... <laughs> It's like, oh, damn, that actually, can we trade? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but I like your ability. We'll see. I'll play that one eventually. I'm going to play this game many times. I know this. I feel Spoilers. like I... Spoilers. Uh, again, I talked about it before. <laughs> Subscribe. We're going to play it on the yeah. channel too many times. I'm going to play it off stream, though, a few more times too. So I do feel like mine, I need to get it up high for it to really maximize its ability. So we'll see. <laughs> FYI, I am the school of the cat, which is not my favorite. Yes. By any means. So, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Edward's asking, so everyone's character levels up the same way when all their stats are at the same new level? Yeah. Yeah. yeah everything's the same on that side of the board. It's literally only the special is, and their starting uh, little deck is what's different. That's it. Which I haven't really, I, what I would need to do is sit out and like, Put all these cards out. See who has I what just, stats and I did just what quickly abilities. look and I noticed there was like different location symbols on different color cards. Yeah. But they might be very similar like most deck building games are. Like your deck's probably almost the same. But you just might have different like a tree symbol on a blue card where I don't. Right. Or something like that. Yeah. I think. I need to sit down and, and look. But again, I don't know. So again, it's only we're our second playthrough. We, we haven't solved the game or anything. We're just going to have some fun playing it still. We'll, we'll eventually get there. But yeah. Um, but yeah. This is just kind of show you another cool game on the channel. I don't know. I have some fun playing through it. And we love fantasy games. I love adventure games. Yeah. So here we go. Here's another one. Mel picked the good school. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I, to be damn honest. It. To be honest, I think I only had one <laughs> choice of something we hadn't played, right? Because we played two. <laughs> you you picked. I, I don't remember. Bob says, yellow reminds me of pineapple. <laughs> oh, does it now? Excellent. You understand. Yeah, little pineapple cubes right here. Yeah, we did have pineapple pizza last weekend. So Snycop says, do you have the expansions for the game or willing to get them? I probably should save that till the end. But like I said already, we have the deluxe base game. So that's why we have miniatures. That's why we have uh, little plastic tokens instead of cardboard for this thing, whatever this closing up shop token is for no fighting. And these plastic tokens here, they're all upgrade components. I don't know if the dice are upgrade components. I don't know. Again, I didn't pay too close attention to the game found. I just went like, I looked at it. I like to back only gameplay stuff. Yes, I know there's other expansions that add gameplay, but the only expansions I have are the ones that come in the Kickstarter expansion box, which some I think you can probably get at retail eventually or at conventions are uh, the Siri expansion, the wild hunt expansion which i think makes it co-op so i had to had to do it like i i was like gotta get that one um and i do want to play that one we'll, we'll stream that one probably uh there's some like um uh, which one did you say siri what was the first siri season? wild hunt there's some lost mount oh yeah uh with the horse with the uh, roach and then there is um something about 
monsters. I think it's with this guy, whatever he is. Oh yes, yes. Uh, I can't adventure, remember. adventure. No, maybe he's the wild hunt one. But there's like an is adventure. Is that the monster trail one? Is it monster trail? Monster trail. Uh, I don't know. There's like a whole bunch of mini expansions in this Kickstarter box uh, that supposedly change up gameplay and add things, and I haven't dabbled with it yet. All we've done is open the minis and melt paint to the minis. That's it. Mm -hmm. So I have those. I do want to see what those are eventually. I don't really know. But the Wild Hunt one, I remember when I saw that, I was like, that's the one I care about. But yeah, Monster Trail. Okay. Oh, Monster Trail is the best one? Yeah, sorry, and Dan's saying that too, that oh. there's no going back, it's essential. Oh, okay, so okay. maybe that's the next one we mix in? Yeah, I just wanted to show the base game because, again, a lot of people look at this game now and might only grab it at their local game store. And I've seen it there. I've seen it at a lot of game stores I've been in recently. Um, and they had just a base box, which I don't think was deluxe. But some stores do have the deluxe box. Uh, I did see that on uh, Board Game Oracle, for example. BoardGameOracle.com, not sponsored, uh, but I can look up here. U.S. and Canadian uh, game stores have an online presence. And you can see here the base game is like a 77-ish, 80-ish dollar game, U.S. Um, but eventually some stores you'll see here have a deluxe edition. Oh, okay. So uh, it does tell you when it's I don't deluxe. know what this dirtbag low price to check out garbage is, but trying to avoid the MSRP. But uh, the deluxe edition is like 160 US. Okay. And let's check here. I don't know if that's the same everywhere has some deluxe. Yeah, there's some deluxe in the UK. There's some deluxe in the UK. Is there deluxe in Canada? Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, so you, you can get the deluxe tech. Oh man, look wow, at, look at that. Look at these guys. What are you doing? That's wow. What oh there's they basically looked on here and said, Oh, nobody really has the deluxe available. We'll sell it higher. Wow. 401 games, deluxe for 184 Canadian. Okay, so we have whatever this deluxe is. That's what we're playing with today. I tried to limit it to just that so that we're not like confusing people with like, oh, that looks cool. I like what you were playing with there. And then they buy this game at their local store and they find out they don't have the stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, not everyone only backs on crowdfunding, right? Like probably more people buy retail copies of board games than buy crowdfunded copies, I would assume. Otherwise, they wouldn't be printing half these games because having only 2,000 backers is not enough to like, you know, be successful. But uh, anyways, a 2,000 game print run is not the play. Uh, you need to print more copies, so retail is the jam. Hello, hello. Hey, Tara. Uh, hey, Joe. A lot of people rolling in again. Yep. Hello, hello, everyone. We're, we're still kind of just explaining. Yep. We haven't gotten into the game yet, so if you know how to play it, or you watch a video, or you've played the game, or you've read a rule book, great, you're good to go. We're just about to start, but I'm not going to explain anything else from this point on. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. As we play, we will explain will what explain we're doing. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I was just joking. You're too late. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm first. You're first. first. Yep. So I'm doing phase one. Phase one of my turn, which look to the map. Movement and actions, it's called. According to this, okay? So I'm going to walk through my first turn slowly here. All this stuff I can kind of do in any order, except there's some, there's some nuance to this, okay? So if... I wanted to do actions at my location, way up here. I can't do them. I have to leave and come back. I can only do a location action. I don't know if that, I don't think that matters for dice poker though. But I can't do a location action unless I leave and come back or I enter the location first. So there is a restriction to it, okay? So up here is spending money to upgrade my stats and to upgrade a stat, so more specifically, these kind of schools, I'm at a school, right? You start a school. Your own school is the only place you can level up your own specialty other than this one that lets you bump your specialty. But this one, you can only bump your specialty if it's equal to or lower than your current level. So I need to move, basically. Otherwise, I'm sitting there. I don't have any quests at this location I'm at. I have only two gold. Yeah, I could spend two gold right now and bump up one of my stats because it only costs basically the level you're going to. So to get to the top level of five, I would just spend five gold to get to that level from four, okay? So if I was at four in my magic, 
at my own school, I could spend five gold and boom, I'm at level five, okay? You know, but I'm only at level one, so it only costs me two gold to go up to the next level on a stat. I can't do it where I am. I have to leave and come back, okay? So could I do that? Let me look at my cards. I have, so I only care about the bottoms basically. Unless I'm preparing for a fight, I might want to keep certain combos going up here. But right now, I'm not fighting. I'm not fighting for a little bit, so I don't care. Let's just use this stuff to build up, get ready for fights. You know, get some money, get ready to level up. Um, so I got two mountains and a tree, okay? So I could move to the mountain beside me here. But if I wanted to move back to spend two gold to level up, which I'm not going to do, that's not how I'm going to play it, but just to show you what's, what, how it kind of works. I can either, I don't have a water, so I can't go back to my water school here. But I could drop these two cards in my discard pile to go back. Or one card and one gold to go back. But then now, why am I going back? Now I don't have enough money to level up, right? So, but those are your options. That's kind of how the movement works. Hopefully that all makes sense. And then again, this whole phase is optional. I could skip this whole phase right now and just fight someone in my space if, if it was legal to do so, but I'm out of school, no fighting there. Or I could fight a monster there, technically. Or I could just explore there. So I can skip this whole first phase. No moving, no location action, no spending gold on a location, level up, whatever. And just say, man, I'm going to just explore this location. Try to get some quests and stuff. It's totally valid. Totally valid. But I like to run around the, the, the land and explore. So... Maybe I'll get a monster trail token. Maybe that's a thing. Maybe I'll go play some dice poker. Maybe I'll go here, but I, I don't really want to trash cards, I don't think, or gain money, because I don't have zero money. I could boost up my defensive stat, trying to go there, but I, I have to spend extra cards, and I don't have water. Maybe I go grab a potion down at this, this mountain place. So many things. But I want to show you how trail tokens work, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to discard a mountain to my discard pile to move. Uh, is, can I even go there? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, can. yeah. I'm going to go along this little road up to here. In there, I'm going to do the location action. I'm going to gain a gold. And then the second part is I now find some information about somebody I need to speak to to learn more about one of the monsters and then try to get on their trail. So I can then go first in combat against them. By default, the monster goes first in combat. That's not a good thing. Uh, but sometimes it's fine. If you're built up enough, you're ready for it, it's okay. Uh, but I'm a weakling, so I'm going to try to find every little edge in battle I can, which that's the sign of a good witcher. So here I will basically choose which monster type uh, I want to try to track down. And I'll probably pick a level 1 monster. I also want to try to pick a monster that maybe Mel doesn't go for, because if she beats me to it, or maybe if she goes for it, then it's a race for that monster because once that monster is defeated, everyone loses their trail tokens. So it all may have been a big waste of time to do this. So it's risky and I love it. So I'm not going to go after the level 2 one. I don't think. I'll just pick one of these ones. I don't know. Hmm. I'll just say mountain. I don't know. I'll pick the mountain one. Hmm. Damn it. That one has higher health, but... Maybe it has a better ability. I just need a potion to be able to fight it. So at least it doesn't troll me too much. But the other one makes you discard a card from hand. So it's like balancing out that, yeah, it's less health. The combat's going to be probably shorter, but it's taking cards out of my hand, so it makes my endurance less. I'll just do the mountain. I don't know any better again. Second playthrough. I'm just going to take it. I'm just here to show you guys how the game works and try to beat Mel without sleeping on the couch tonight. So do it in the most elegant way possible. <laughs> uh, yes, I don't want to fight Mel or play dice poker against her and steal her money. <laughs> oh, bad move. Now Mel's going to win. <laughs> Listen, Joe, no. No, Joe, no. <laughs> but just so you know, when I play with Mel, we play off camera. I don't go at her running at her trying to take her down into combat. I don't try to play dice poker and steal her money. Because we're just having fun. We can play a co-op game without getting in each other's faces. Did I want to go fight her and try to steal her money? You betcha. But I probably should do it today, or one of us needs to do it, because we should show a Witcher fight in our first playthrough, okay? Mm -hmm. We should show dice poker, but we can do that against the, the I do board. like dice poker. Yeah. But a Witcher fight is very similar to a monster fight. So you kind of don't need to do it. You understand fighting. Once you see one, they, they both make sense. They just have different like rewards to them. 
It is an available trophy, though, if you it need one. It is a one, trophy. Right? It, yeah, and you can only get the trophy once. So because we're only playing two-player, each of us only has one trophy. So once Mel gets this trophy, she has a special ability, and she's one more point closer to winning. Okay? So it is something you want to go for, maybe. But again, you could just kill a bunch of monsters and fly up the trophy track. And then racing to different monsters, trying to grab the monsters maybe your opponent's trying to get is also part of the fun. So you can still be annoying. Chat has spoken. Yeah, yeah. And I guess Hans is right. Also says uh, you don't need a potion. It just forces you to discard one if you have one. Oh. Right? I don't. Oh. I think in that case, you're right. Because if you don't have one, you just do like as much as you can. It, yeah, you're right, actually. I do remember that in the rules. You're so right. I think in this or case, you're FAQ, okay the FAQ, if you don't that. have one. Oh, wrong one. Oh, yep, yeah, that is the wrong one. Okay. This. Unless it says you must. Yeah, let's see. Must. So oh, you have to. Oh, you must. Yeah, for this one you have to. Maybe. The player must discard but, any one but of But I, oh. I don't remember does must in the rule book. Is there a, a thing saying must is like you have to? I think the way this is worded though, to Maybe. initiate a fight with this monster. Yeah, I would say you have to, yeah. I would say you have to in that case. That's how I would rule that. Yeah, because it says must. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, so that's your this token? is my okay so here's how monster trail? trail works right i'm doing this this action so i take this location token it's not a monster trail token ready ready now it's a monster trail token okay not a monster trail token is a monster trail token okay can we do a test okay everyone <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> i need to know i'm going to test you right now i want to know there's two answers is it a location token or a trail token are we ready Test one. Oh, hold on. I'll do this. Location or trail? Okay, let's see if everyone's paying attention. Is that a trail token or a location token? I mean, I'm sure some someone's going to say have... none of the above. It's actually <laughs> called this in the rule book. <laughs> All right, Joe, you failed. <laughs> I will see you after class. <laughs> Brian panicked. <laughs> Splunge! <laughs> oh, nervous. No one said there's gonna be a test. Bob <laughs> leaving. No one said there'd be a test. I love it. These are the answers I expect from our community. I love it. Oh, that's funny. Okay, so this is a trail token if it's the backside, okay? So I don't have a trail on the monster yet. I'll just mix these up here, whatever. These are randomly shuffled at the start of the game. Oh, we needed a poll in that case. Sorry, some people got confused. No, They're waiting no. for a poll. <laughs> I wanted fast answers. I need to point people out who got the wrong answer, okay? This is all about centering, uh, you know, pointing people out, and, and we can all make fun of them. That's that's what we do here. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so this is the location token. So I don't have a trail yet. I've just started the adventure, a quest of finding the trail. So I put this on my board face up, and I put a coin on it. So I have to get to location 11, which is here. Once I enter that location, I gain the gold that's on here. It's kind of like I'm buying information uh, or I don't know. It's not really buying. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm basically getting info about a monster. So I'll gain some gold. I'll flip the token over. And now I get to go first if I fight the mountain monster. I think of it as like in the show, they pay you to go fight the monster. Oh, so yeah, they're that's like. Right. That's right? right. So they're giving you yep. money and saying, yep. here, this is the last known location of this monster. It feels like I should be paying for the information on the monster on how to get the jump on it. But I no. guess it, they're still giving me Thematically, you know, if you go to this location, yeah. you can get paid to yeah, go yeah. fight a monster. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> a small token in a gargantuan size hand. <laughs> they're actually not that small. Okay, yeah, they're kind of, but no, these are pretty big, actually. Compared to the coins. Yeah, most tokens in games are like this, um, and yeah, they're actually pretty big. Okay, so that's what's happening there. So this is my money. This is not my money yet. Okay, that's my location action. So again, on your turn, as much as you have resources, you can keep doing stuff. Uh, so I have like a mountain and a tree here. Hmm. You know what? Let me show dice poker right now. Yeah, sure. I get it out of the way. I'm sure we'll do it more, but I'll spend a tree. That allow me to go to a mountain later. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. All right. So I'm gonna discard this card to go to the tree. Okay. Trying to be efficient with my cards. I'll go along the path. I'll end in this little town, number six, uh, and it has the symbol on it to do dice poker against the uh, the like people in the village or whatever. 
So dice poker, Mel is going to be my uh, running the opponent. Uh, I'll have a set of dice. What we're going to do is there's some gambling. So I need to put up money on the line. And the house will put two on the line. Normally when you, you go against witchers at the table, all the witchers at the location, you'll all play poker against each other. And they'll all put in a gold and the house will put in one gold and the winner takes it all. But when you're just solo playing dice poker against people in the town, the bank puts up two. So it's potentially a way for me to gain three, uh, gain two gold or lose one. Okay, so that's on the line. Now we both roll our dice. And remember we have, these are the results. Okay, the dice that come with the game, of course, they put custom dice, so I can't complain. They could have cheesed it and put basic dice in here and sold you higher dice on Kickstarter, which I think there was a, a different dice back. But at least in the base game, they include custom dice. Because like in today's day and age, you don't put basic dice in the game. You can always make them look prettier, okay? So I appreciate that. Got to shout out the good stuff. Uh, okay, so there's the ranking, okay? So we're playing dice poker. Okay, uh, what do I get here? So how it works is opponent, Oops. so whoever didn't start the dice poker, I think, gets to... Um, well, maybe you first. can only play dice poker against one other witcher. Yeah, I think you can. Oh, only okay. one. Only one witcher? Okay, because there's only two sets of dice, so I don't know how that would work with everyone playing. So yeah, sorry. I think it's always only three gold on the line, if, even if you're playing against another Witcher. We only play the game two players, so I was trying to think, like, uh, more Witchers, maybe. So, Mel, you can choose based on looking at our results. So I got a one, uh, a one, two twos, and two uh, fives. Okay, I have two fours, two sixes, so right now I'm winning, but I will re-roll just this one. Okay. And, oh. Oh, no. I got, what is that called? Of, what, when you get... Uh, a full house. Yeah. I have a full house. So Mel is a full house. Literally, the <laughs> like uh, the only way I can beat it is with four of a kind or five of a kind. If it's a complete tie, I win, but I don't see that happening. So I'm definitely going to lose this, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think. I don't know what the. I don't really play this game in real life. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> I only like to gamble when it's not my money or real money. I don't know. You'll look. No. I just got two pairs. I was hoping for like a four of a kind. Mm. Uh, so the money all gets lost. Okay, so there's dice poker. That's simple. That's straight. It's got to be simple, right? So people aren't waiting for their turns. Obviously, I'm taking a long time on the first turn, but... Oh, no, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I think the first few will... And then I have longer. a mound card left. So, yeah, I think I'll use that to go along the road here. And go down to this mountain. Mm -hmm. And in here, I can do the location action of gaining a potion. So I'll get my first potion. I can show you guys what a potion card looks like. So they basically have an ability on the top, some flavor text on the bottom, and some pretty sick art. Uh, this, you can have up to four potions. You control. If you draw or gain extra potions, you just discard down to four. So you can always hold four. Uh, this one, in they all get used in combat. They're optional to use in combat. This one deals one damage, and during this first, uh, this fight turn, sorry, you may only play one uh, card of, a combo of one card. So it limits you to play one card, but at least you get to do a damage. Okay, we'll just keep our potions here. They tell you to kind of put them below your player board, but it doesn't matter. I'll just keep them right here. Uh, and I have no more cards in hand, so I think I'm done in this phase, because there's nothing I can do at that location. Uh, I then move to phase two here, where I fight, but there's nothing at my location to fight. No monster, no witcher. Uh, I'm not at level 5 of anything, so no meditating, so I'm obviously exploring. And I will explore, hmm, I want to explore the wilderness or the city. Hmm, I think cool stuff's happening in the city. So I will hand this card to Mel, she's going to read to me, which is quite a rare stream, where Mel will be doing as much reading in this stream as I do, which I appreciate, so maybe I'll lose my voice, like, sometimes. Go ahead. Are you good? No, but yes. Okay. The villagers surrounded you in a tight throng, speaking excitedly over each other. You managed to calm them down enough to find out what they are so agitated about. It turns out a witcher passed through the town a couple of weeks ago. Actually, he's still here, six feet underground. The witcher arrived and took the, took the contract, but before he'd had a chance to depart, a huge man came and slaughtered him right here in the middle of the village. I saw it with my own eyes. He cut him down, took his medallion, and left the, us with the monster problem. A learn more about the witcher killer or b in your profession death is far more likely than retirement you shrug and decide to look 
around the market like you intended. Pay two gold to the barracks. Or the bracers, 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 bracers. So I can pay two gold to walk around the market yeah. and shop and ignore everything the guy just told me. Mm -hmm. Or I can try to learn more about this, this witcher killer. This witcher killer. Oh man. I have the money, so I could choose that second option. What do you think's here? Some sick weapon or something? Some food? I don't know what the heck I'd be buying here. If it's just draw a stupid potion, that sucks. Uh, I'm going to go, I want to find more info. Okay, so you're going to learn more about the Witcher Killer? Lo I want to learn more about the Witcher Killer. Okay. The villagers tell you where the killer went and what he looked like. You still have a chance to catch him. Quest Mountain. Enter 12. So you get a mountain token. So I just want to show this one now that she's read it out. So most of these cards kind of follow the same idea. There's like, I think, two or three different types of these cards. But you're basically handed to a player at the table, the, the player to your right or whatever. They read off an option to you and they give you two, they read off the story, the situation and give you your options. And sometimes you can't choose them if you don't have what's required. Yes, yeah, uh, so if you didn't have two gold, you wouldn't yeah. even be able to choose a second option. And then based on that, the results will happen. So this one, I now have a quest. So I'm going to keep this card beside my board here. I'm just going to put it right here. And now it says quest mountain. So that just means grab the, a random mountain token. Similar to how I'm trying to get to location 11 mountain, I now also want to get to 18. And if I get to- 12. I don't think you flip it in this case because it has a specific number. No. Oh, sorry, sorry, you're right, you're right. So I'm sorry. I need to get to 18. And if I get to 18, it tells me I need to, once I enter 18, I'm going to get card 12 from the quest deck. So if you play this game a whole bunch and you know what card 12 is, that's what I'm working towards trying to get. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Again, oh, this is only your second time playing. Um, but this is awesome. Okay. You guys know I love this whole choosing options. I love it in the Haven games. I like it. We were playing Hunters AD recently on the channel. Hunters AD 2114 just finished up that campaign. But I love the idea of like, here's the story, make a tough choice, you get rewarded or punished, whatever. Uh, I love it. So even if you're not fighting, there's still some interesting stuff happen. Uh, meditating is the only one that sucks, but it's like you get trophies and you get abilities out of it. So it's still kind of cool. But I love this idea. And I know there's more of this stuff in the expansions to add to this stuff. Uh, but like, I just want to show there in the base game, there's like 56. And not every quest card leads you to one of these, just FYI. Sometimes it'd be like, I choose an option and I just get two coins or I get a potion and move on, right? Okay. But I found one and I made the choice that I'm going to get to go on a quest. Maybe. I didn't even see what your other choice would have led you to. The other one actually would oh, have drawn right a, away. A, a card. So that could have been something cool. Like, man, oh. now I wish I picked B. Because you probably would have bought an item because you I, paid two. And I don't know what this is and I don't want to know. Don't spoil me if you know what it is. But this is some of the fun of the game. So even if you see the situation, a different player you're playing with might pick a different option. So you might not see the same things every game, which I think is really clever. Mm -hmm. Really clever. Uh, so yeah. So I chose to find more info. Hopefully it doesn't lead to me dying. Um, but yeah, uh, this is awesome. I mean, he was a Witcher killer, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to meet the Witcher killer. Oh, option B says you are buying bracers. Oh, it does say it. I'm oh, sorry. and then I drop? misunderstood when you said, pay two gold to buy bracers. I misunderstood when you were saying that. What, oh, sorry, because I said it wrong at first, because I said barracks. So it is to buy some bracers. I don't know what the bracers are. I don't know what the ability on them is, but I now wish I chose that option because I'm now going to have to deal with a witcher killer or something. So we'll find out. Maybe it's great. Maybe it's great. I don't know. But stay tuned to find out. Keep watching. Uh, all right. So that, that is me. I did my one mandatory thing from number two. Now I move to number three. Oh, uh, number three phase I forgot to mention is drawing cards is always first because if you have no cards in hand, you're going to be having trouble buying some of these. Um, right here, phase three, discard optionally. So if I still have cards in hand, I can throw them away if I, I'm digging for other stuff. And you don't get punished for running out of cards in your deck only during a fight because that's your life. Um, then you drop to three cards. Okay, I drop to three cards. And now here's the cool part. There is some decision making. So the next player can start their turn. When I'm in this phase, next player can start doing what they're doing. I, I don't care. Um, they just tell me when they need me to roll dice or or be the monster and deal with the monster deck or whatever. But 
Uh, I look at my hand. So there is some game within the game here. Because I see that I have... Oh, I have a wild. Okay, cool. Uh, if I'm building up for a fight, maybe like I want specific cards that have damage tips on them or defense or comboing. So I have this... I have this purple card here that can connect with a blue so I can play these two together in a combo and deal one, two, three damage, for example. So maybe I'm thinking, I want to fight this turn. Then I look here in my deck building step. Okay. So knowing what resources are in my hand, I look at this market over here, uh, which of course you can't see all of it at once zoomed in because I didn't do that correctly. But um, again, this card up here in the top costs one. For example, cost one, it's red, does three damage, but at the end of my turn in a combat, it makes me draw three less cards. Uh, and it costs one, but because I'm in turn three trying to buy it, uh, or phase three, uh, it costs two. It's got a plus one modifier on the board. Um, and this one, for example, would be great to have with red cards because it can you can play it to connect with red cards and I'd get two extra damage if I connected a red card to it. This one allows me to take a card from my top of my discard pile back to hand. So it allows me to live a little longer in combat, have more resources. Um, but down here, for example, this card is reduced by one, but it's already a zero, so it can't get lower. And again, the cost is discarding cards out of my hand. So it comes back to me deciding on what I need. Do I need cards to move around? Like, I'm looking where I am and like, which way am I going? What am I trying to do? So while another player is going, there is stuff to think about because while well, you're still doing this phase, so I just want to make that clear. We're going to do stuff very structured and it's going to make the play longer. But when you're playing with people, I just want to show the downtime isn't as bad as I was saying before. Because I could sit here just kind of thinking about my next turn and go, okay, maybe I don't want to go to a place with water. I don't really care. I don't need this card for fighting or anything. I could discard this to help pay for um, maybe this card, but I need to start discard a second one. So maybe since I have a wild, maybe I'll discard these two. I'm not going to fight, for example. And then I take this one, for example, but then I only have two cards to do my next turn, not the three like I had in that last turn. So I might also want to go, hmm, maybe I'll take a card for free. Again, my deck is my life in combat. So the more cards is great. But if those cards aren't comboing together or doing damage or keeping me alive or whatever, uh, I could also just lose the fight because I can't kill the monster. So you got to kind of like think of where you're trying to go with cards or the colors you're trying to get and the combos and the cost. But if I'm not fighting anytime soon, I might just want more cards to go run around the board and do more stuff. So I kind of look here and I'm like, hmm. hmm. Yeah, like maybe you're kind of trapped in here and you need cards to get out yeah, or you want to get to a specific location. And I've done that. I thought, okay, <laughs> if I didn't have a water card in hand and like had two forests and a mountain, then it's like, oh, but I want to go down here and I don't want to go through this one. I really want the ability here and then I want to go this way. So it's like, hmm, maybe I'll just do it based on those cards. And it still works for some reason. I don't know, but... I'm sure there's efficient ways of building your deck for certain things, but you also got to keep in mind they're multi-use cards. Another one of the things I love in games that I need to worry about this phase, not just the fighting phase too, right? Um, so yeah. Mm, like this one here, it, it, it like plays into my yellow kind of Witcher thing of recovering cards. And it also has some connections which make combos happen, but then there's no symbols on them. So like, it allows me to do more things on the turn, but like not giving bonuses, but it is just a zero cost card. But maybe I like moving to places with water. And that's a thing. I don't know. I don't know. I'm probably gonna just take this card, I think. It has a connection. Maybe I'll try to be a lighter fighter. So I'm doing a little less damage, but maybe it's connecting more and being quicker. I don't know. I'm gonna take precise cut. And I don't have to discard anything because it's a zero cost card. It goes right into my hand. So now I have one of each terrain and a wild. So I should be able to get around and do what I want. Flexible. Yep. And then I slide the cards down so that they get cheaper. So now I'm seeing cards that are sliding down. I'm like, oh, crap. I didn't pay two for this. Now Mel has the option to buy it for one next turn. Oh, no. Just like any other deck building game. It's like that, that balance of like, do I want to try to, you know, hate purchase or... You know, to annoy my opponents, or am I just taking what's good for me? Who knows? Oh, look at this one. It has lots of symbols on it. So green is a defensive cards, obviously. This will allow you to basically, after you play the card in a combo, allows you to draw it back to your hand. 
And again, all the symbols for on these combat cards are right here if you want to pause and kind of look at them. But obviously, you'll see them happen as we get through our first fight. But uh, yeah, you also have to think about that stuff when you're buying cards. So that's why I'm bringing it up now. But yeah. All right, that's a turn. That's a full turn. Yes, that took like three hours, but that's a turn of the game. That's how it kind of rolls. Uh, and I showed a whole bunch of stuff. The only things we haven't sh shown is combat, bumping up stats, either purchasing or I'm going to a location. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you do whatever you want. Mel gets to play and do whatever she wants. I'm just going to try to beat and beat her at the same time. <laughs> okay, sorry. When I was talking, I moved myself from here to here because <gasps> that was part of our, like, Rob's teaching. So uh, this is my mm. actual starting space. So I start yeah, here. Yeah. No cheating. So I just moved myself back while you were talking. If anyone is like, why did she move? No, you moved it there and you were trying to cheat and not be in your school at the start. <laughs> I know what was happening. I mean, it would be better to Busted. not be in my school at the start, but hey. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm saying. Okay, I'm going to start with actually um, spending a water and moving to play dice poker. <gasps> I'm going to see if we can get some more money. So I'm going to put in one. The, house, or the tavern's going to put in two. <laughs> All right, well, we got, got one two, pair. Two ones, a two, and two threes. Whoops, that was a three. Where'd it go? Two ones, a so two, I and have oh, you have two, two pairs. pairs. All righty, I have one pair. So, so... I choose to reroll first. Mm -hmm. And then... These are my... Yeah, sure. I'll just, it's a low two pair, but I'll just reroll this third die. Oh, oh no. Oh, Look what's happening here. Yeah. Doesn't feel nice, does it? All right. Well, I'm going to just roll all these and fingers crossed. Uh, no, we only got two pair. So you are the winner. Yay. Put that money in the bank. All righty. We lost a coin. Yeah, yeah right. I know, right? Well, okay. The house always wins. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I'm going to next. I'm going to next spend another water card. And this one I'm going to go up to here where I can increase my specialty level. As long as, as long as I am equal to or below my level. My specialty is equal to or below my level, which it is. Oh, that's not good. Yep, go ahead. So I will increase that up one. Nice. Okay. And then. I think I am going to do something similar to what Rob did. I'm going to spend a mountain. I am going to go down here. I would like to gain a trail. So first I gain one coin. And then I would like to gain the... You, you could gain the same one I have or one of the other ones. No, Your I'd choice. like the water trail. The water please. one? All right. Your water one is 12. 12. And then I'll put a cold coin on it. Okay. Oh, 12, you say. How convenient. No way. Oh, yeah. If you pull the same location you're on, you have to discard and redraw so that you're not on the same place. Hmm. Well, I think we want to get lucky. I think we want to get that right away. And um, I don't have any water cards, but I do have a wild. So this one I can play to go anywhere. So we will do that and we'll go up to this water back here. Mm -hmm. um, so first things first, I cannot I guess I don't know the order, actually. So would it be this would be first because as soon as I enter. It's kind of any order okay. things happen at location, but. Two limits are here. So what two limits are imposed on you from being able to do this location? Oh, yeah, again? I've already done this, so I can't do this a second time. So each location action can only be done once per turn. I also wouldn't be able to do it because in this case, my specialty is above my level. So I wouldn't be able to do that ability yep. even if I was allowed to. Um, so then it doesn't matter. Um, I didn't have any options. I'm just going to gain this coin and flip this over to now have a water trail. I have one more card left, which is a mountain. Again, I can't go back into this one and do that same location. But where do I want to be is kind of you the question. You could spend a gold in that card to go to anywhere. I could, but I'm just wondering if that's even what I need to do. Or if I'm kind of just okay to be here. I could go into here with you and we could have a, a witcher on witcher fight. But I you do feel against me right like now. it might be too soon for that. Come at me, bro. Uh, I'm not ready. Come, yeah, your best stats you are have, higher. Yeah, but you have one more card than I have. So uh, already your life is... That's, One more than me. Yeah, that's right. Let's get it on. <laughs> no, me, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to save this one card in my hand. For now. Rumor is you are a chicken. That's what <laughs> I heard around town. <laughs> You're already searching for witcher killers, so... Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so you go do Once your I thing. Once I take down the witcher killer, I will become the witcher killer. Yeah, because they did say something about him taking his medallion, so maybe you'll get a, something good. That's right. I'm going to come don't for know. your medallion. Watch out. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm done in this phase. 
Okay. Okay, phase two. I'm not with a witcher. I am not at level five, so I can't meditate. I will go for a city event. City. I'm oh. not a chicken. He's just stronger than me currently. <laughs> All right, here we go. The area in front of the smithy has been fenced off to form a makeshift arena. It is said that whoever wields a weapon made by the local blacksmith can never lose. As if to prove a point, a hefty bruiser of a man waits in the arena, idly swinging his sword and waiting for a challenger. Option A. Ask to see the swordsman's wares. B. Try your luck in the arena. Oh, see the swordsman's wares kind of sounds interesting because I do have coin if that is the case. Or try my luck in the arena probably means I need to fight something or do something. I'm going to choose A because I have, I have gold if that is an option. A is... You learn at the craftsman. Uh, you learn that the craftsman has a brother, the finest armorsmith in this part of the continent, and said to be the supplier for the Amerian army itself. So you gain this card as a quest. We're going to draw a mountain. So your quest leads you to thirteen, which better not be right beside you. Oh my god, <laughs> this is so annoying. Mel gets all the easy locations, like mine are across the map. Serenity now. Uh, and once you enter, though, you have to lose a gold, but you get to buy armor. Oh, love this. Oh, this is so good. I'll just throw this like up here somewhere. So wait, I'm just going to ask you a question. So if I do luckily win this game for any reason, are you going to have like an asterisk that it's, it's kind of not fair because everything was like right here? It's all recorded. <laughs> I didn't make the game. I didn't design the game. So we point out the flaws and how it's... <laughs> it's random. You know, how you are sitting on a horseshoe that's partially uh, inserted itself into your bottom. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Whatever, man. That's lucky. Oh, and I'm look at no look time. at this mountain card that I luckily saved from my hand from last time. Okay. okay. So then I draw so now, up to three. Yep. But you could discard I that could, mount if you didn't want it. Nope, I want to keep that card for sure. So I have three. Oh, now I have one of everything, which is wonderful. I like that. And now I can purchase a card from the row. It was one that I like, but I think it costs one. I'm actually just going to look on here. It's easier to see. You do whatever. That one is. Oh, it costs two for them. Hmm. I think I'm actually, because I don't really want to lose too many cards at the moment, and I just want to from my hand and I want to kind of have more options. I think I will actually just take this purple card here, which is cost zero. Okay. Alrighty. Alrighty then. Okay. That's my turn. Trying to get to 18 or to 11. I guess 11's close. 18's all the way down here. Oh, but it would help bump my combat up if I made the way over there. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's go water. Okay, I'm gonna bump my special up one. Hmm. Hmm. If I play dice poker against you, I can't fight you. Correct. To fight you, I'd have to end my turn in this space. I could leave and come back. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Mm, never tried a witcher fight, so I think yeah uh, try it. Is it the right time? Probably not. Probably not. I just want to play <laughs> witcher poker, dice poker. Oh, you're trying to gather my my piles of money here. Yeah, that's annoying. You have all the money. All right, let's fight. Only uh, because I started with more than you. I'm going to end my turn here. This is so weird. Probably not good to fight so low, but I want to try it. School of the couch versus school of the chicken. Oh. Let's go, this is Dan. Hey, Dan. All right, so let's do... Uh, I'm ending my phase one. Okay. Going to phase two. I will fight another witcher. 
so we now reset our decks. Hold on, let's look at the thing because again, I've never fought Witcher versus Witcher, but there is on here. I want to see if we can go by the reference. Nope, there is some other thing about setting up. Oh, that is. Um... I thought it was on here, but maybe it's, it is. Oh, oh yeah, it is here. It is here. It is here. So there is wagering in the game, which I didn't really point out on the sheet here on your player board. But every other player at the table, in a two-player game, it doesn't matter. But in a three, four, five-player game, other players can gamble on the combat, on who will win, the attacker or the defender. So you would just place a gold on one or the other uh, and, you know, get winnings or lose your money based on how the combat goes. So it's super fun. Another way to get players who are kind of sitting around waiting for their turn to kind of get involved, which I like. Oh, okay. Ra's making a wager on me. Okay, all right. Yeah, make your wagers <laughs> Place your now. wagers now, yes. Sure, sure. <laughs> you get paid out in gold. Uh, all right, so optionally, that didn't happen. Okay, so both fighting players combine and shuffle all their discarded action cards with their action decks, keeping the cards that are in their hands. Okay, that's my hand okay. here, so I'll shuffle these. So I'm taking my discard and my deck. We're going to struggle through this again. This is our first time, but it's similar to other combat. I just don't know the outcomes, and we'll figure that out as we go. I feel like the, my life pool is so little. <laughs> I feel You're like fine. we're in trouble I know, here. I, know. I should, probably shouldn't have done this so early. But it's okay. Someone's going to win. I'm in your so. location, and we might not be in the same location ever again in the game. So, like, let's just do it now. Because okay. I want to show it off, and I want to experience it too. Okay. So, uh, then what? The active player takes the first turn. Okay. And then this is the turn. So, we can step one on a player's turn. I can use potions, specialties, and effects. I don't have any effects because that would be off like weapons or friends or trophies. I don't have any of that stuff yet. But I do have a potion, so I could deal damage, but then I can only combo one card on this first turn. which Might not be good. Uh, but I could save that for another turn and play that potion. My specialty only matters when I have a discard pile, so I gotta wait on that. Then I try to play a combo, resolve a combo, and then you drop cards, and then it's the next player's turn. Like, it's that straightforward. Okay, so, and again, our deck is our life. So, I will combo. Uh, hmm. Should I combo like this or like this? Hmm. Question. Question. Tough questions. I think I'm going to go like this. So, you play your first card. Okay. So, right now, if that was my only card, I would just do one point of damage. I don't get this point because I haven't connected it, but I will play a second card. So I do one point because this connection is blue and I have connected a blue card, it's another point, and then this point here. So that's what I'll do. Three damage, Mel. Okay, so I start by reducing my shields first. So one from here, and then the remaining are lost from my discard. So two more. From your deck, from your from deck. From my deck, sorry. And if she two didn't have discard. enough deck left, uh, they would then come from her hand of her choice of which cards to discard. So again, once a player has no cards in hand, a deck, and are out, you're done. You're knocked out. But there is a chance we could have that both happen at the same time. And if that happens, I need to look up what happens because I don't remember. But uh, yeah, so that's what we'll do. So we resolved that. So you took three damage. I did. So your shield's down to zero. And two, two cards, cards in your discard, discard pile. Yep. Great. Okay, so now I discard these the same way I played them. So this goes in my discard. This goes on top. And it matters because there are card effects that I showed you that can draw the top card back to your hand. So there is a game within the game of comboing things in a certain order, planning for future turns. But right now, I don't have much of that going on, so that's that. So at the end of the turn, I only draw up one to one. Uh, I draw one card, sorry. I have one card in hand. I'm going to draw a card, and that's it. So like fighting early in the game, like is not a lot going on. So, yeah, no big combos happening. Yeah, no big combos. Like one card. Yeah, but you'll see as the game goes on, the fights will get more interesting, get flashier and stuff. Uh, and get more intricate. But yeah. All right. Come at me, bro. Okay. So I'm going to use my specialty, which is once per fight during your first fight turn, you may perform your speed ability to draw cards from your deck and possibly reorder uh, some to the top of your deck in any order. So I can draw the top three. During your first fight turn, you may perform your speed specialty to draw cards from your deck. Okay. So and possibly return two. some to the top in order yeah so i can only return one i'm oh okay. and then two and three so i'm returning one of these just so what happens to the other ones in your they're hand? in my hand i'm drawing them oh wow that is crazy 
I need to look that up and make sure that's all that's working. You can. I will. You keep going. Oh, though. they're saying, yeah, the cat is OP that way. Yeah, what the hell, man? I think I will take... Again, I didn't this start this fight expecting one. to win. I just... Oops. Maybe I win, and but... I'm going to put this one on the top you. of my deck. <laughs> I think it's fine if that one gets... Okay, so now it's my turn. Third of cards don't really have amazing combos yet, but... Ghoul of the Cat. Speed. Once per fight, during your first fight turn, you may perform your special draw cards from your deck and possibly return some. Why does it say the exact same text that's on the player board and not? I don't know. Not? Oh, why draw? It's not? It says to draw yeah, cards draw from, from your, your deck. deck. Yeah. And possibly return some to the top of the deck in any order. Which I assume is these are the ones that I'm putting back on top of the deck, right? Or those, or is it backwards? Oh, it's look at three and draw one? Okay. Is that what that symbol means? I wish it explained it more in here because it's like the rule These book, are right? my three. Um, look at three and draw one. Look at three, draw two. And so where are the other ones? The other ones are going back on the top of the deck in any order. Is that what it's saying? Depends on the level. So right now, if I'm level one, two, so I'm drawing three, looking at three, and I'm putting one in my hand. The rest are going on top of my deck. Then in this case, two are going in my hand, and one is going on top of my deck. And then in this case, I look at three, and I can take all three. Yes. Okay. Okay. So then I only get one of these, and the rest I'm putting. So that's going to go as bus as I thought. here, and that is going to go. In... Okay. All right. So eventually you get up to I can drawing, look at three and take you, three. You look at three and then take up to three. Yeah, if I want. Okay. That seems better. Okay. Okay. Man, I thought it was like, yeah. In any order, yes, yes. Uh, I think that was fine. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's opposite. But he's probably going to do more than one damage to me, so I don't think it'll really matter. Uh, so then what was I going to do? So I think for my turn back... I am also, I'm going to play that as my starting card, connecting it to this blue card. So I will do one, two, three damage Oh no! Uh, so one here, and then two, and three. And I'll discard them in this order. All right. I'll just combo one. So my defense goes up one. And then I get to draw one extra card, so I'm drawing two. This card, go ahead. Okay. Oh, hold on, my special, hold on. You may perform your special to draw. Hold on. So before playing that, sorry, That's fine. I just need to read this special. I need to understand mine too. Uh, you may perform your magic specialty to draw one card from the top of your discard. Oh, I didn't draw, you're right, you're right. One card, thank you, sorry. Then zero to two cards. Oh, okay. Then I discard. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna do my special first. Uh, where I'll take this top card. Okay. Then I discard one from hand. I don't know. That's not really the greatest. Okay. Then I would combo. And then play this card, which would raise thing, and then I draw two cards, mm -hmm. then this goes to my discard. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. So I'm going to play this one into this combo. So that will deal one damage to you. Uh, boom. And then I will return the top of my topmost discarded card to my hand. Okay. Those are going into my discard and then I will draw one. Michael, thank you for subscribing. Welcome, Michael. All right. All right. Did you draw? Yeah. Okay. Draw, draw. At the end of your turn? Yeah, I did. Okay. I have three cards in hand. Yeah, I drew one, and then I had a plus one on this okay. card. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Uh... That's it. One, one damage. Well, alrighty. 
gonna draw one at the end of my turn. Go ahead. Okay, I will play this one into this oh, one. Oh, come on, man. So first it'll do two damage. Uh, okay, one and two. Uh-oh, my deck's empty. And then it will give me one shield. So lame. And then I draw one. My deck is also empty. Yeah, my ability sucks. <laughs> I'll go in there. But so our decks are both empty. I don't know how many cards you have, but hopefully I can survive this with one shield. I have three cards left in hand. Same. And I have one shield. Oh, see, you're already up, though. And you're comboing. I can't combo Jack, but I'll try. Oh, yeah. Then I can't win by Why? even looking at my cards. Oh. Because the math isn't there. Math is a math. I should have, yeah, I should have waited and used my ability maybe after, but it's fine. All right, so I'll just do this, uh, or I do two damage. Okay, so I lose one here, and I have to choose one from my hand to lose. I'm taking a chance here, but I think I'm going to lose this one. Okay, and then uh, I would get to draw, but I have nothing to draw, so I just have one card in hand. Oh, I forgot this. Oh, I forgot that earlier. But it's okay. Would that have probably killed me? No, because it only did one damage. But oh. I could have instead, on those turns where I kept playing one card, I could have used it. That's fine. Oh. I'll save it for later. I'll save it for later. Yeah, okay. go ahead. Go so ahead. then I'll just play a two damage. Bah! So that's it. My deck's empty. My hand's yeah. empty. You win. So if we look at the board here, there is a way to determine what happens after the fight, supposedly. So wagers didn't matter, so we skipped that. Uh, I'm the attacker... So I lose. So I get to gain a card that's zero cost from here, I believe is what it does. And I ignore these, these, these modifiers. So it's this card or this card. I'll choose this one. And this goes to... Your hand, I think, right? I don't know. It doesn't say. It just shows plus in that. There's no hand symbol. But uh, let me... Maybe it shows here. Oh yeah, we both have to raise our shield level up. That's not on there. Up to our default defense level. Put all your cards together, hand, deck, and discard pile. Okay. It doesn't say shuffle them though, but whatever. Suffer fatigue if you gain a trophy. I didn't gain a trophy. Gain... And I don't gain a trophy for defending myself. I didn't gain gold, but you might. Yeah, I think you do. So you put your cards together, okay. and then you would gain gold, I think. You gain gold. If I look at this on the board, it shows for winner on defense. It shows draw four cards, but it's not in that same order on here, which is annoying. But then it has plus one slash two slash three gold. So I think you might gain gold based on my reputation here. I think. But I don't know for sure. I'm just going to open up just to that yeah, yeah. one page in that. So that was Witcher Fight 2021. So I'm going to use a fan-made index for this $200 Kickstarter game. And try to see fight outcomes. 25 to 28. Let's jump to 25. That's Monster. Probably on 28. This Freaking PDF is so slow. Oh, which are up on 27. 27. Right. So it says uh, the defending, uh, the attacking player. Nope. It was the other way. The I, I lost. So. The defending non-active player won. Defending non-active player gains gold which doesn't tell you how much, shuffles their deck and draws four cards. The attacking active player adds a zero-cost action card to, to, the, uh, to their discard pile and draws one less card during phase three. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Then gaining trophies didn't happen. Okay, all right. Okay, so I draw four cards. I gain one gold because that's your... So level. this card I got goes to my discard pile. And then now I'm in step three. Oh yeah, I'll refill this. So I just draw one less. And then I still buy, I would assume, because it doesn't change that of this. Yeah, because that would be the next phase anyways. Yeah. Okay. Oh, one last thing. We have to put our token oh, yeah, here. Yeah. We can no longer fight in this location. So yep. it's kind of like a safe location. Until a Witcher fight happens somewhere else. 
And that wasn't a school, right? Nope. Okay, good. Yeah, so we cover that, so we can't fight there again until we fight somewhere else, which would make that token move. Hmm. I don't know. Where am I? Okay, I'm gonna discard a card. I'm gonna take this card. For one. Okay. Slide. Draw. Go ahead. All right. So I'm going to spend a mountain. And this is me. I'm going to go into here. Which I guess. Let's do this first. If it's my choice. Uh, mountain 30. So enter. I think that just happens when you enter it. Yeah. Lose one gold to buy armor number 13. So I'll lose one gold. And I will buy armor from the deck number 13. Number 13? Yeah. Okay, so remove that from the game. Give me that token back. Oh, yeah, we'll just right. put in like a little discard up here or something. Uh, 13. Let's see what you purchased today. Leave this card in front of you. Armor. Each time you play a dodge green card during a fight, it additionally raises your shield level by one more. Oh, well, isn't okay. that fan freaking tastic? I'm just trying to deter you from coming at me. I've already tried. <laughs> I don't think I will ever try that again. Yes, I protected Lucky him. Lucy over here. Why don't I even try? I just wanted to see what happened, and so I have experienced it once. So I know okay. what the outcome kind of can be if you lose. So now I can do this ability here, which I can gain one gold, and then I can get a monster trail, which, again, I don't know about that level 2 monster yet. 14 health. I think I go... For a mountain trail? Number nine. Number nine. All right, so I'll put that down there. Okay, then... Uh, oh, that's what I want to do. I would like to spend a tree and go down here gaining one potion. You just got Blizzard. After you finish your combo, play any one additional card from your hand. It does not need to match extensions. That would have been helpful. One. Yep, that would have been super helpful in my potion. combat there. But uh, yep, yep. right. And then I'm going to spend a, another tree, and I'm going to go to my school. I don't think I. I do. I would like to get this up, but I need to. I think up some of my other stats. Uh, but I can only increase my, my, uh, specialty at my own school. So I feel like I should probably do this just because it's the only place I can. Um, only other than three, here, yeah. if my level, if I get my level up, but this ability seems pretty good. So I think I will do my specialty. We'll spend three gold and I will increase my specialty stat to level three. And then... I have one card left. It's fine. I'm actually going to spend this. It's a water card. I will go up to here and I will just quickly play some poker to see if I can get some of that money back that I just spent. All right. I have two pairs. Fives and sixes. Three, four, five, six, six. Oh, that's probably better, right, than what I have? No, I don't think it really... Like a straight? Is that what you have? No. Oh, a five straight? Three, four, five, six, six is not... I need, like, one. Oh. Mm. What do you have? Two pairs? Two pairs, a five and a six. Mm, pair. Okay. So... No, it's worse. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely worse. Uh, All right. I guess... I would hope I roll like a two on this, but I mean, whatever. I think like really a five. So I got one pair. Okay, I don't need to. I don't need yeah, to re-roll. Yeah, you win. It's like okay. a, I got a crap hand. Perfect. Then that's the end of my 
map actions. State level of uh, these two. Let's go city again. City, yeah. All right. You encounter a dwarf outside the city walls. When it removes his hood, you see that his face resembles a hammered beef. <laughs> Someone did a number on him. The city council has decreed that non-humans are no longer welcome within these walls. I've been operating a forge here for years, and I thought maybe I could make a deal. But no, damn it. I left with nothing. A, give him herbs that should help his wounds heal, or B, ask him if he has some place to go. A. A, the dwarf is grateful, but as, honorable dwar as an honorable dwarf, he is offended when you tell him the herbs are free. Gain one gold. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I'll draw three cards, and I will... I will spend one card to buy the purple card in the center. Okay. All right. All right, let's go tree, forest. Uh, we'll go. And then here I am going to spend two gold. I will up my combat stat, I guess. Okay, then I'll play mountain. And I'll go here to 11, which will give me this coin. And now I have a mountain trail token. And next I will explore. Uh, let's explore the city. You hear rumors of a girl who calls herself the local master of poker dice. She says she loses only one game a year. Finding her isn't hard. She rolls two twos and three threes and casts you a question, questioning glance. A, roll the dice, or B, call the girl a magic using cheat. B. B. She springs up in an instant and quickly shows you her telekinesis, letting her, let, sorry, let, sorry. She springs up in an instant and quickly shows you that telekinesis lets her throw people or witchers just as easily as dice. Raise your lowest attribute by one. They're already as low as they can go. Raise one. Oh, raise, sorry. Yeah, whatever said. your lowest is. So I guess you choose in that case. Uh, I will choose defense and then that raises up this automatically. Now roll a die. Roll a die. One. One. Oh. Discard all your potions. Perfect. So if the <laughs> potion I didn't grab didn't matter. Uh, so potion discard is here, let's say. So we just put it all in the same pile. No, we can't because we might... no, we won't run out of potions, but maybe. All right. So yeah. So I, I didn't get the potion here, which I realized, but uh, I lose them all anyway. So it's fine. The game new. All right. And now here. But you got a free stat, so I mean, I guess you have to yeah, wait yeah, which is exactly, better. Exactly. So I'll draw my three cards in the third phase. What am I doing here? Let's see, what do we got? What do we got? I'll discard two and take oh, yeah. yeah, I'll take this one. Okay. All right. Uh, your turn. Okay, I will spend a water. Oh yeah, I should grab and discard it. Go here. Edgar's gonna lose his mind. <laughs> the game state is not 100% perfect. So I cannot trigger this ability because again, my specialty is above my level. I will then spend a mountain and I will go into here and I will gain a potion. Please. Okay. And then I am in number nine. So I will green that gold and turn that 
into a trail. I will end with one card here. I'm not going to discard this card. I like this. So I will, uh, let's do a wilderness. The alderman invites you into his home. It isn't me. It's the townspeople. They all think we need a witcher. Something's been eating the people's chickens. I keep telling them it's just the foxes, but they say it's impossible. You don't really hunt foxes, do you, eh? The man laughs nervously, nervously with a furtive glance towards the door to his left. A, promise to investigate, or B, check what's behind the door. Check what's behind the door. The alderman tries to stop you, but fails. Behind the door, you find blood and feathers, and the alderman reluctantly admits to the ailment that plagues him, especially during nights of the full moon. Fortunately, you're able to help. Discard all of your potions and gain two gold. Oh, man. That sucks. Phase three? Phase three, yes. Draw, draw up to three cards. Two and... Oh, that costs my whole hand that cost. Wow. Let's go with one card for that one. Let's do this card. Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess I'll see where my quest takes me. I'll discard Mountain. Go here. Uh, I guess I'll do the quest part here. This will just go to a discard pile. And 12. Yeah, I don't know if there's ever choices, but you just take it just in case. Oh, there's not. So if you... Oh, okay. The image of the barrow. Raised by the villagers for the fallen witcher is still clear in your mind's eye. You follow rumors of the killer from one place to another. Finally, you find the powerful, powerfully built man and see four witcher medallions at his belt. He may look like a brute, but he is light on his feet and draws his blade with surprising proficiency. You realize you might have met your match. Lower your shield level by two. And draw two cards from your deck. Okay, shield level down to zero. Draw two cards. Uh-oh. Immediately play a combo. Only apply shields and damage. Then, based on the total damage, receive the... This is the first time I've ever seen this. Then, based... I've never seen a fight on the cards like this. Based on the total damage, receive the corresponding effect after continue your turn. Okay, hold on. So you only draw, draw two cards, and then now yep. you can play one combo. One combo. You're trying to fight the man. Well, that's all garbage. Wow. That sucks. So I guess I should have only done this knowing I was going to fight somebody. Well, well I, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You don't know. I I don't I didn't know what I draw either, right? But uh, okay, sure. One damage. Woo. Is that the card I want to get rid of? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's fine. All right. Um, okay. So then it says, huh, zero to two damage, drop to four potions. Three to four damage. When you gain a card during phase three, pay nothing for it. Oh. Five, any add one of the revealed action cards of cost one to your discard pile. Hmm. Okay, well, yeah, I'm out rocking and rolling, so that's that. Uh, so but four potions. Uh, drop to four potions. Okay, sure. Boom. All right, we're back. We're back good. in the game. <laughs> that's pretty good. Then we're back in the game, I guess. All right. Uh, and then you didn't do this yet, did you? No, but my combat level is already higher. Oh. So that sucks. Yep. But hey, it's what happens. Because uh, I'm not lucky. So I'm going to do the water. I'll go here, I guess. I'd go to play the poker. I'm going to suck. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's go to the poker place. Put one on the line. Two from the house. Roll some dice, and you get to choose oh, yeah. what three. you're doing with yours first. Mm. Got three of a kind, all ones. Fan freaking tastic. All right. Well, let's see if we can get another one. Uh, he did not. I only have a pair. Maybe. Aren't these? Uh, nope. nope. Different stars. Yeah. You have a pair, 
Uh, and that is lower than three of a kind. Yep. So I'm not going to reroll, obviously. You're good. Oh, I finally won something. Sweet. Okay. And then uh, I think that was water. Um, yep. Then I'll just spend this card for a mountain. I'll go here. I will draw the potion because maybe I'll switch it up with one of these ones I have. Uh. Here, switch it in. I have Blizzard, Thunderbolt, Swallow, and Maribor Forest. I don't know what the hell that is. Sure. Okay. Um, done. So now I'm going to go here. I'll explore wilderness, I guess. You stop at the entrance of a cave. It's rumored that monsters have made it its hideout. A. Draw the monster out of it to the surface. Or B. Attack in a cave using the element of surprise. Uh, I was not listening at all, but... Uh, you stop at the entrance of the cave. It's yeah. rumored that monster a monster has made it its hideout. A, draw the monster out to the surface, or B, attack in the cave using the element of surprise. Uh, lured out. Lured out. So A? Yeah. A massive golem charges you, and, and its fighting is fierce. You finally manage to force the monster back into the cave, and you see a sign... And you, sorry, and then you use a sign to collapse heavy rocks into its, onto its head. Raise your defense level. Okay. Lower your shield level by one. And discard one potion. Oh, I guess that's like from Yeah, fighting. it just goes up and down. Yeah. And, and then uh, discard one potion. One potion. Okay. And then draw three cards. And all right, let's see. Yeah, I'll just hmm. I'm gonna get rid of two cards, I think. Yep, I'll get rid of two cards, take this two cost card. Slide, 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 slide. Oh, well, they said you accidentally raised your alchemy instead of your defense. I raise my alchemy instead of my defense. So this should have gone up? Yep. Oh, okay. But then that still was good. Yep. Oh, okay, okay. Here guys. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, guys. Wow. Maybe I did. I don't remember, but I probably, you guys are probably right. Because you guys can see and you guys can catch that stuff I can't for some reason. Okay. Uh, all right. Here go. Hmm. What I want to do, I don't have the cards. Hmm. Oh, I think I need to spend this tree to go here. And I'm going to increase my combat. Are you sure you have the money for to... that, Mel? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Need to be able to draw more cards in combat, I think, is what I want to do. And then... Uh, 
Mm. I don't know. Leandro keeps reminding you. I've reminded you a few I times. I know. I know I can, but... Yeah, yeah. You can do two cards. Any two cards. We've talked about Like, we explained this many times. Leandro just, I think, wants you to do that. No, I, think. I know what you're wanting me to do, and I want to do it. But with the ability on the monster as well... I don't want to go in and have zero cards yeah. and start my turn and have no action. It seems like a waste. I need to get myself into a position where I at least can just spend oh, the sorry, one card Leonardo. in. I'm so sorry. And yeah. then... Yeah, Leonardo was saying you should... So I'm just trying to do things while I get... plus gold to move. But yeah, we explained that at the beginning of the stream. That was an option. Yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely know I can. Yep, I'm yep. just trying to maybe bump up a little bit as well while I wait for things to line up in my... No. favor here no brian the reason why things like that happen is i'm trying to make sure the stream goes good i'm playing as correctly as possible remembering rules what we've explained trying to beat mel kind of and then again this is only the second time i played the game and also yeah i need to finish caffeine but and whenever uh, it's a new game right it's it is a, a new game yeah so it's like not stressful but it's like we want to make sure that we try to do things correctly but again you're playing on the internet live you're going to make mistakes so i appreciate everyone helping us catch them for sure but brian there's no excuse. I'm going to play Mountain. <laughs> but I appreciate your help. <laughs> Go here. I will draw a potion. <laughs> okay. And I will end my turn here. And I will go for a wilderness. All right. The farmer is sitting slouched against a scarecrow's post. He moans in pain. When you approach, he slowly uncovers a nasty wound that's in his side to you. A, help him dress the wound. B, follow the tracks of a beast that wounded the farmer. E. You find the tracks with ease. Gain any one trail, but Green. you already have, obviously, you can't have more than one of each trail. But <laughs> That's what I was hoping. <laughs> okay. That's crazy. Okay. Then I will draw. Okay. And then I will purchase. I will purchase. This is finally lined up for me, this one. Thank you. Okay. Hmm. All right. I will play. I'll play whatever to move to here. Uh, in there, I'm going to spend two gold to raise the proper thing here, alchemy. That will get me a potion. Okay. And then... Oh, that raises my level. Now my level is reached all of its above my current level, so my level finally goes up, which will draw me a card. Okay, then what? Uh, do I go at this level two monster? Do I just do it? I'm, it's probably too early, but I'm loaded with potions. I could move up here to raise my alchemy level, but it's like I get a potion, but I don't need a potion. But maybe after the fight I will. You can only use two of them in the fight. Yeah, true. But at least it'll get rid of some, so I'm not mm -hmm. just keep drawing and cycling like for no reason. Yep. Hmm. I could do both. I could go there, raise, get a potion, and go back. Oh, she'll let me do a trash some card to get another card. Hmm. Oh. I see. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'll go there, I guess. So I'll play this wild to go here. I'll trash this card. No. I'll play this wild. No, I played a tree to go there. Sorry, tree to go there because I want to trash out of my hand, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to trash this card. It's out of the game, but like we're not going to cycle through, I'm sure. Um, and then I get any one card from here, ignoring this modifier that could be equal to or greater by one or less than this cost. It's a zero cost card. So I'll just take this one cost card to my hand. Mm -hmm. It looks like. Okay. Maybe this card will help me fighting it. I don't know if that was bad. It's kind of like a straight trade. I don't know. I'm experimenting. Holy, look at this one. Fight, fight, fight. All right. Uh, okay. And yeah, I'll end there. Okay. I think. Hold on. It's not connected right up to the mountain one. Mm, the other monster? I don't, I think, don't so. think so, no. No, okay. I was gonna say, man, I could now run up to that monster. Although, nope, that's also mountain. Okay, anyways, uh, so yeah, let's fight the level two monster. I don't know. Okay. Probably not a good idea to start your monster fights can against you level two. Down so I can uh, it? yep. So again, the first turn, I gotta play my card randomly. Oh, I mean, that works. But if I only have one card in hand, does that, that matter? 14. Yeah, I'll just play it. We'll play it on the board here. So just, yeah, 14 health. Oh, man. So hopefully these potions can help. My level ain't too great. So now I reset my deck, right? Uh, yeah, Witcher versus Monster. So the player controlling the monster, which is Mel in this case, because we only have one other player at the table. Uh, it reads a special ability, but we already did that. The player controlling the monster creates the monster's life pool, which Mel did. 14. Out of the 20 monster cards available in the base game, she shuffled and randomly took 14 of them. The active player combines and shuffles all their discarded cards to their action deck, but I keep the cards that I had in hand, so I have some information that I'm going to the fight with. I'm going to the fight with one card, which is probably not good either, but oh well. Maybe this gamble pays off. Uh, if the active player has a monster trail token for that monster, I don't. So I won't be getting to go first against this monster. Uh, yeah. So whatever. Uh, okay. So it goes against me. You choose. Charge or bite. Bite. So when you flip a card, oh, there's two sides. You're just basically 50-50 flipping a coin. You say charge or bite. You said bite. Yep. So, so we'll do the bottom part, right? The player lo lowers their combat level by one and takes zero, one, or two damage based on the monster level. So you take no damage, but you have to lower your combat level by one. It's a monster level two. Oh, so, it's a two. You're right. Sorry. So you do take uh, one damage. Oh, and my, my defense is already zero also. So it's like I went in this fight really bad. Sorry. I uh -oh. just assumed it was a one. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do uh, in my first fight, I can do some potions now. So let's raise my shield level by one. <laughs> okay. And uh, at the end of this fight turn draw one less card okay let's remember that and Doesn't work right. Oh, it does work. Yeah. So I'm going to do this one also. If you have zero, one, or two cards in your hand, draw the top card. Oh, but then the random thing's going to hit me. And it'll be either or card gets played. Oh, but they both work. They both work, I think, right? Uh, so I will do that one. So I draw the top card of my discard pile. Now, to play my combo, it'll be random for the first turn. And then I'll play this one. So four damage, right? Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four. Okay, these go to my discard pile like so. I draw one less card at the end of the turn, but because it hurt my combat level, I, that means zero. So I literally have no cards in hand. So lame. Okay, I will choose charge. 
Okay. Uh, three damage. Three damage? Yep. Uh, I have nothing... Oh, yeah, I do have one armor now. Or uh, one defense. So one, then two, and three. My turn. No combos, no nothing. So monster gets to go... Draw, you drop. Oh, I draw one card. Jesus. Okay, I will choose charge yeah. again. Actually... The player discards a number of random cards from their hand, empty hand from the top of their deck, according to the monster's level. So you would discard two. So, uh, this is not good. Uh, it, the fact that lowered my combat level right off the top is so bad. All right, so I have nothing to play again, so go ahead. Draw your card. Oh, I draw one. Uh, yes. I will choose Bite. And we will do... The player takes damage equal to their combat level. Okay, so that's just one. Well, at least that was good, I guess. All right, so I will just draw two extra cards at the end of my turn, so I get three. Okay. okay, go ahead. I will choose bite again, four damage. Oh my god! One, two, three, four. My deck is now empty, and let's see if I can combo anything. Five damage. Oh, that might be enough. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. <sighs> Wow, you won with one card in hand. <laughs> but I would have got, got a card back. Oh, yeah. But if you just drew two damage or more, which I'm sure is common, uh, I would have lost. Oh, yeah, my specialty, I totally forgot, too. Yeah, so oh, I would have so had, had, anyway, yeah. had a little more survivability. Yeah. Wow. I totally forgot about my special. So you get yeah. a trophy. I don't know when I would have done that special, because I was drawing, like, no cards. Oh, yeah, my special sucks. I would have drawn one card back and had to discard a card. So many cards I had no cards, or so many turns I had no cards in hand. So it really, my abilities, I still need to get up one more level so I could just get a card back. Yes, the gamble paid off, yeah. Yeah, barely. <laughs> wow. Whoa. Okay. I can't kill a level one witcher, but I could kill a level two monster. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So you get that as a trophy. Oh yeah, trophy. So we flip the card over. There's some story there if you want to read it based on the combat, and then once per fight, during your first turn, roll a die. Depending on the result, perform the following effect. Oh. So maybe some card draw, maybe, most likely. So this would normally slide underneath my board here, and I would have a whole stack of trophies growing, but because we don't have room for that, uh, I'm just going to put it up here, and hopefully I remember it. Okay, then we're going to raise Rob up on the track here. He will have to uh, fatigue, so trash one card. Oh yeah, so I can trash any one card, uh, hmm. I don't know what the heck I'm doing here. Oh, and you also gain two gold. Probably just a level card. zero one, maybe a starter card. So any anyone's my bird in the top, I should look at those and then what colors I'm trying to get rid of. Yeah, I'll just get rid of this one. Okay, sorry, what? Two gold as well. Oh yeah, two gold, sweet. What else? What else? Oh yeah, reset my defense level probably. Oh yeah. I think it's all right here. I gain the trophy, I get two gold. And yeah, there is more that's not on the board there. Yeah, raise your shield to your defense level, put all your cards together, hand to deck, discard pile, suffer your fatigue, gain gold if any, shuffle your deck and place it face down. Active player, move to phase three, draw one less card if defeated, but you're not. Okay. So I shuffle up my deck, I get to phase three. Oh yeah, we need a new monster. Oh, yeah. Uh, it has to be one level higher, so we're getting a tier three. Whoa. Whatever that is, uh, oh, I think that's, it's, oh, it's that's the older sister it. of what I just killed. Let's see what this is. This one. Oh, it's the Bruxa? I don't, I don't want to fight Bruxa. I think that's this one. And Bruxa's going to the forest. And Brooksa will be randomly placed in 17. Oh yeah, what's Brooks's ability? During each monster's fight turn, that monster has only one or two cards in their deck. Its attack deals two additional damage. Oh wow, that is cool. So See, when it's almost about to die, if I don't like finish it off with a huge blow, then it will keep biting me back. Yeah. Oh my. Wow. Oh my. That's 17 health. Wow. Okay. And see, as we kill monsters, they get stronger here too, right? So, ooh, maybe, yeah. Ugh, okay. 
So shuffle. Oh yeah, and I lose my forest because you. Thank you, Edgar. Oh yeah, yeah, and the Mel's forest trail goes away. Yep. So anyone who was trailing that monster, it doesn't matter. The monster's dead, so it doesn't matter what information you had about the monster. It's gone. Uh, the other thing is the potions that I flipped down. I stayed within my two, so these get discarded now. Okay, and I think that's all. <laughs> Uh, but I'll shuffle and go to the next phase here. So I'll draw three cards. And then I'll look at them and kind of pick a card here. Mm -hmm. Let's go with... Hmm. I don't know. I think I'll just take this free one. Hmm. Like got connections. So it's like this one's good. It's got hits and less card punishment. But it's got no connections. That's the problem. Yeah, I'll take this one for free and maybe do a little more on my next turn. Because I feel like I've been a little restricted. Okay. Oh, another one. Look at all these two of these hits on them. All these connections. Oh, they're like the same card but different color stuff. Cool. Okay, uh, your turn. All right. Wow. I am going to... No, the trail tokens do get shuffled back when they run out. Yes, 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 yes. Also, the monsters would too if uh, we ran out of monsters. Uh, but there's plenty. And I think expansions add more even. So, yeah, you can, you can make sure you're not running out. Four. Yeah. So... yeah. Alrighty. I am going to spend a water... And I'm going to go into here. At this point... Did you show this? No. I think I should put blood all over her, but I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah. She's too clean. It's like she just got out of the shower and we need to make her dirty. <laughs> I didn't realize. Um, okay. So I get to increase my defense because it is um, lower than my level, which also ups my shield value. Yeah, yeah. Two-player game, you'll run out of less stuff for sure. Okay. I'm going to end my turn there and I'm going to fight this <gasps> monster. So... I'll grab this and read it out loud. Also, I'll get rid of this water token. Uh, Arachnus. Arrakis. Or the player creates their life pool. They discard one card from hand. Okay, so I'll do that now. I'll yep. discard a card from my hand. So it'll become part of your life and pool. I don't have any cards here, but I will have me the monster oh, yeah. deck. Sorry. I'm going to make the life pool of 10 cards to the monster. This. I do have its trail token, uh, so I will get to go first, which is wonderful. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So once per fight during your first fight turn, you may perform your speed specialty to draw cards from your deck, which I get to draw and look at three. One, two, three. And possibly return some to the top of the deck. So in this case, I keep two, I discard one. And you put one back on the top. Put one right? on the top of my deck. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be a stomping. Take. Okay. And then I get to go first because I. Oh, yeah. Trail token, let's do this combo first. So I attack for three. One, two, three. Okay, and then I get to draw two additional cards when I draw for combat, so I'll draw four. So, one, two, three, four. Bite. Four damage. Four damage. So I lose two from shields, and then two here. Uh, this needs to be in your discard. Oh yeah, first. sorry, sorry. 
other thing I don't think we re- we mentioned is there's a seven card max in your hand at when you're playing in combat. I think I'm one. Yeah, two, yeah, three, you, yeah. Four, you can draw six cards, no problem during the game, and just make sure you always have max of seven in hand so you can discard down. But if you try to a draw effect during combat, uh, you must ignore it if it's going to make you go over seven. Okay. So then I will play this one into this one into this one. So that will deal two damage. This will give me one shield back. It's not part of my armor because it's not a green card. And this will let me return the top card from my discard pile to my hand. Okay, charge your cards. I'm going to say... And then I draw... There was no benefits or... No, two. Charge. The player trashes any one card from their hand. Oh. Empty hand means it's from the top of your deck. So trash is out of the game. Uh, your, yeah, you keep it over this way. Oops, Oops sorry. sorry. Nope, yeah, but starter will easier to put it out back later. Two, three. Come on, man. You obviously have the cards to finish this. Let's go. No, I don't think I do yet. Really? You have like 10 cards in hand. Yeah, but... And even that's cheating. All right. I think this is good, though. This is a good combo. Oh, that was what my card was. Okay, so I think this is my combo here. Oh. So I only do two damage. Okay. Oh, but then it's going to die on its own turn. Yeah. It's going to hurt itself. Then I get two shields, but my max is up to two. Okay, so I don't get the bonus of that. I get to return the top card from my discard pile to my hand. This card goes also back to my hand. And those go my discard. Okay. Charge. The player discards a number of random cards from their hand. If you have an empty hand from the top of your deck, according to the monster's level, it's just one. So I get to take one random card from your hand. Shuffle it up. Let's go. This is super important. Gotcha. And now it's dead because it has nothing left. Yeah. Right? Winner's me. I think it's over. All right. So uh, you gain the trophy. So what do we got? For creating the life pool, if you have zero or one card in your hand, draw two. Oh, I this wish is I so had good. That. This is so good. I wish I had that. Especially with my cat ability. Dr. Squatch, thank you for subscribing. Thank No, Dr. Oh, joining. joining. Sorry. Thank joining. you. Clicking the join Clicking button, the becoming a member. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. So much. you. We Thank appreciate you for the that. support. Thank you. Okay, I'm now tired. I get two coins. I go up to this level. I have to trash a Did card. Did you your defense? It was already. Okay. Yeah. Before and now, I think I'm just gonna actually try. Oh, that's a wild. I'm gonna trash this one. Okay. Uh, raise my shield. Da da da. Suffer fatigue, done, gain gold, shuffle my deck. Uh, no, it doesn't matter which cards you discard for the monster. It's like they're all random. I don't think any of them do anything. I'm not reading all the cards I'm discarding. I don't know, should I be? The rule book didn't say that. Um, so yeah. P-S-H-M-S-L-V. I don't know how to say that. I'm not going to try. Because it's not really a word or a name. Dealing damage to a monster, you should reveal cards... Do one at a time and check what's on the card. Ah, uh, no. No, because they don't matter, yeah. I don't think it matters, yeah. The rule book doesn't say that. Uh, I'm not sure if in... Oh, if in mo- base game, but Monster Trail gives you effects on cards when it's revealed. Oh, okay. Yeah. It doesn't oh, matter for the base okay. game, but... Yeah, we haven't gone to the expansions yet, so I don't know. Sorry, you're obviously late to the stream. We're just playing with the base game today. Just base game. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So we'll remove this monster. We'll remove the water trail. Okay, okay. And then we'll draw a new mini. Okay, so next water monster is going to be at four. And this is going to be a level two because that's a level one level monster. Level two, I'll pick from this pile, I guess. Uh, what the heck is this? Gross. I think that's this one, but I definitely did it the wrong colors. Noon Wraith. I think. During each player's fight turn, their shield level can only be raised by one in total. They ignore additional shield raises. 14. And it's going... Four, uh, four. Four. Four on the water. Oh, yeah, that's her. That's the tongue, right? Yeah, but I definitely didn't do it in that. It's fine. I just did. Ah! More like undead. It doesn't matter. They work. Better than plastic. The gray plastic. <laughs> Up there. Oh, okay. Another level two monster. Fun. 
I didn't even see what the ability was, sorry, during each player's fight. Uh uh, you can't raise your shield by more than one a turn. Oh, okay. So even if you play a whole bunch of greens to raise the shields, it'll never go up by more than one. Okay. Then so I that. draw three. Looks good. Uh, I think I'll actually just take this card for free. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Man, this combat lowered my thing. It hurt so much. So much. All right, yes, I will spend water to try to be efficient and go to this monster spot. I'll raise my alchemy level by one, which will gain me a potion. Okay, I don't think I should fight this monster right now. So I need to recover from the last fight, probably. Hmm, but to get up to that next location. Yeah, I can just discard two cards, right? Oh. All right, I'll pitch two cards to go to this location. Because uh, it's a mountain and I didn't have a mountain. And then I will spend two gold to try to get my combat level up again. Mm -hmm. And now I'll... End my turn there. We'll start a monster fight against this one. The player must discard any one of their unused potions with no effect to initiate a fight with this monster. All right, let me check my potion abilities. Which one should I pitch? Discard one card from your hand to deal two damage. Oh, I like that one. Raise your shield by one. Draw the last card. No, it's swallow. So discard. Boom, let's get it on. Okay, he's got 12 health. You have a trail token, so you're going first. Uh, okay, so I need to shuffle my stuff together. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and I have a trail token, so I go first. Let's shuffle. I gotta remember my ability. That kind of sucks, but it might get me out of a jam. I also have to remember I have this new trophy once per turn during your first fight turn, which I'll do right now. I'll roll a die. It's a six. That will draw me three cards. Wow, One. very good. Yeah, lucky. Some luck is coming my way. All right. Let's just uh, fight this fool. I will play that combo. So I hit it for one, two, three, four. Okay. And I draw one less card at the end of the turn, so I'll just draw one instead of two. Okay. Right. I'll say charge. The player trashes any one card from their hand, empty hand from the top of their deck. Player trashes any one card from their hand. Oh, okay. Uh, this one. That sucks. Okay. Um, Combo time. How much health does I have left? Sorry. That's okay. Seven. Okay, seven. All right. Uh, so I'll do this potion at the start of my turn. After you finish your combo, play any one additional card from your hand. Does not need to match extensions. So I'll play this one and this one. So four more damage. Five, right? No, oh, it's not connected. No, four, yeah. One, yep. two. So you don't do the Sorry. damage on the connection if it doesn't match. Yep. 
For four damage, I draw no cards because it's minus three on my card draw. Four All right, damage. I say bite. The player lowers their defense level by one and takes zero, one, or two damage based on the monster level. This is monster one, uh, level one, so you take zero damage. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I got no cards, so I skip my turn. You draw. I draw two. Go ahead. I will say bite again. Three damage. Uh, so two go away on shield. One goes away on the top of my deck. I will one. combo. Uh, one, two, and draw an extra card at the end of the turn. So two Dead. damage. Kills it, right? Yep. Boom. So now trophy is mine. What does this trophy do? During uh, once per fight during your turn, or fight turn, if you have zero cards in your deck, raise your shield level by one. And... That's not that great, but it's a level one, so I guess whatever. Okay, this potion's gone. I think that was a mountain, so I lose my trail token on that monster. Yep. Okay, we're gonna increase you. Up so I have to trash three. two cards. Yep. Trash that one. And... Let's trash this one. We're gonna get a new monster, which is now level two. Uh, it's a wolf. Some kind of wolf dude. Werewolf! Uh, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, That's okay. I didn't draw a new Not yet. token. So it's going in mountain number two. Uh, which is way up in the top here. Oh yeah, this guy looks cool. Yeah, he. I love. I love enemies like these. Like these are my favorite type of minis to paint. All right, look at this furry, furry bugger. All right, he goes up there. And what's his ability? It's Fourteen health. Before the player creates their life pool, they lower their shield by two. Oh, oh man. okay. Enough of that. And next time we need to get a mountain, I'll shuffle up whatever mountains are over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so that was fight turn two. Oh, yeah, I get two gold. I get two gold, right? Oh, yes, yes, don't forget. Is there that. anything else? Uh, did you raise your shields? No, put together, suffer fatigue, gain gold, shuffle your deck. Yep, we're good. Okay, I lose my trail token too, right? Because yep. that was obviously used in that fight. Okay, shuffle, draw up to three, and then card purchasing. I'll just uh, tree where am I? Oh yeah, can you pass me that menu up in your space? Yeah, thank yeah. you. Hmm. I'll discard one to take this one on the end here at a discount. Okay, your turn. Okay, Han has a super. Or Han has a super chat there. Sorry, Han, uh, I was deep in it there, man. Uh, member for nine months. Thank you, Han. Thank you. Thank the you. The monster lowered your defense, not your shield. Sorry, Rob, but at least this way Mel can win, and you won't be on the couch. <laughs> monster what? lowered your defense, not what? your shield. Oh, did it? Defense, not your shield. I don't even know which one that would have been. What Looking for one that has text on it. Oh, the player lowers their defense oh, level okay. by one and takes zero, one, or two damage. Oh, okay. I see. I see what you're saying. My bad. My bad. No, that's okay. I assume the same thing as what you did. Yeah. I lowered my sh yeah. shield and defense are not the same thing, supposedly. That's not confusing at all. But yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, is there any way to take a quick washroom break just before I take yeah, a break? Yeah, oh, sorry, a, I just yeah, need to take a washroom quickly. Yep, yeah, we're going to take a few minute break. Uh, just take a break, stretch, grab drinks, washroom. Uh, we'll be back in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.
All right, we're back. All Thanks right. for waiting. Appreciate the patience. Thank you, yeah. My turn. All righty. We are going to spend a water, and we're going to go up here to a school where I will train my alchemy for two, bumping this up and gaining a potion. And then since all my stats are above level two, I will go up and draw a card. Okay. Well, that's actually better. Okay. Then I will Hmm. Well, I want this card. So I'm going to do something silly because I want the cards in my hand. I'm going to spend a water and a gold to Whoa. move into here because the other cards work better. Okay, and you get, if you're doing the location, uh, you get a gold. Oh yeah, I gain a gold and I can gain a trail token uh, or trail quest for, yeah. I'm fighting, a, let's do the water. So water... Location 14, you could gain some money and learn more about the water monster. Okay, all the way down here. Okay. Okay, and then I'll end my actions there, and I will do a fight. Fight against the werewolf. All right. So, again, werewolf is... Before the player creates a life pool, lower your shield level by two. Okay. I'm going to shuffle up the monster's cards here and create a 14-card deck. Oh, before you create your life pool, if you have zero one cards, I don't. I have three, so that's all good. Creating my life pool. Okay, and I do not have a trail token, so this uh, werewolf will go first. Uh, bite. Four oh. damage. All right, well, I have no shield since he reduced them. One, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, during my first turn, I can do this where I draw three cards and I can keep two, of keep them. two and put, put one on the top of my deck. I just want to see if I can actually. Keep two. Okay. How was that? Which time I do this? No. No. Okay. We have 14 damage we need to do here, eh? That's actually not a bad idea. Okay. So I think. This will be my combo. So I will deal four damage. One, two, three, four. Okay, I will gain one shield. I will return the top card from my discard pile to my hand. And I will draw one less card. So I will only draw one card to draw up. And then these will go in the discard. Um, bite. Player takes damage equal to their defense level. Two. Okay, two so damage. Lower my shield by one and do that. Okay. We will do this combo. I'm doing three damage. Did I? I only do. Sorry. Oh, no problem. Edgar's asking a question, but always leaves out information, so I'm not sure, and it's always delayed, so I don't know. Oh, oh did you open up enough? Six cards. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh. I guess so, yeah. Oopsies. I'm trying to help Mel win, Edgar. <laughs> Edgar, shush. Yeah, yeah, come on, man. <laughs> no, thank you. Jeez Louise. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I thought twelve. There's no even monster with twelve. That's okay. Oh, my. But now I'll do the three damage to the monster. Uh, three damage. Okay, I will gain two shields, which is my max, so my armor doesn't really help me. I will return this card to my hand. And then this lets me draw two additional, so I'll draw four. I only have two, so I'm good. Oh, I only have two left. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh... Oh, my gosh. He may beat me, actually. Charge? Oh no. Three damage. Oh, I should have chosen oh, bite. I, oh, luckily I have one, two. Yeah, and you choose the card to get rid right out of your hand. Three. Okay. He has how much more damage? I'm so sorry. Uh four. Four. 
I think if you do three, so I need to do. Oh, might still die. No, nope, I, I think I need to do this potion first. Uh... Okay, I think I need to do this. Uh, discard one card from a hand to deal two damage, which will be this one. That will deal two damage to. And then I can play this combo, which is exactly two. Oh my gosh. Potion for the wind. Nice. So wow. trophy you get. Uh, if you end your turn on a mountain location, draw one additional card during phase three. Wow. Oh, that is so cool. That's so it's thing. not even. Okay. This That's is cool. discarded. Matthew, That's... thank you for the super chat. Or I guess Mel should thank you. Thank you. Hashtag team Mel. Thank you. Thank you. That was a. <laughs> Tight one. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Him lowering my shields by two at the All beginning. Right, so I... This guy's gone. Wow. This is gone. We need a new mountain cool. token. So I'll shuffle the mountains. I'll put this one here. Make a pile of these ones. I'm just going to try to get my cards out so while you're doing are 11. Uh, this is going to be a tier three. So we got his cousin uh, here. In there. This is one. This is the Striga? Striga? Before the player creates their life pool, they lower their shield level by one for each card in their hand. Yeah, that's pretty much the older brother of what we just saw. One. And eleven. Oh, it's Blanca from Street Fighter. Street Fighter 2. Okay, cool. <laughs> Two. At eleven mountain location is where? Right here. Okay. Great. Raise that. I've done that. I suffer fatigue. Gain two gold. Shuffle. Okay, and then I'll. You fatigue two cards off here. I did. These are my two here. And then draw three. And I'm looking at. Hold on, it's two. I'm actually going to spend two. I'm going to spend two for this blue one. Sorry, wait, that's not a blue one. Oh, yeah, that's a nice one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I will s water. Move here. Um, alchemy level can't go up because it's already higher. Uh, then I'll end my turn there, and we'll do another combat. Did I draw four? I only drew three. Was I supposed to draw four? Sorry. I don't know. All right. Anyways, Jacko, thank you so much for the one penny less donation than Matthew's <laughs> donation. A little love for Rob. Thank you so much for the support. Much appreciated. Uh, this is Noon Wraith. During each player's fight turn, their shield level can only be raised by one in total. They ignore additional shield raises. Edgar, I see what you're talking about because of my mountain. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. I see what you're talking about. Okay. I drew one more. And your turn on a mountain. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got it. Sorry. I didn't know what yeah. you were talking what about. What he at meant first. was, Mel, did you draw four because of your new trophy you just got? <laughs> I know. It's like always a cryptic question <laughs> with Edgar. He always like, he doesn't realize there's like a 20 second delay on his chat. So sometimes we're like already moved on. It doesn't make sense. I will forget that. Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah. We appreciate the corrections. Though. Thank we you, do. though. Yes, one more it's card is helpful. It's always cryptic. It always like, wait, what do they mean? What, what, what do you mean, Edgar? What are you talking about? All right. Uh, so, yeah. Um, end of my turn. We're fighting. You're making a 14 card deck, not a 12 right. monster card deck, uh, like I did. I don't have any info, so this thing goes first. All right. And I can't raise my shield by more than one a turn. Okay. Which doesn't usually happen anyway, but don't let okay, me Okay, it's going first. I'm going to say bite. You're already... You've, oh, you got to create your life pool and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Why am I only at two shield level? It, it, it reduced oh, yeah. it. No, that's right. I am, yeah, yeah. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not good after getting all wounded there, but... Oh, yeah. Uh, once per fight during your first fight turn, that's not yet. And if I have zero cards in my deck, raise my shield level by one. Okay. All right. All right. I'm saying bite. Uh, the player takes damage equal to their alchemy level. Uh, so two off of here. I'm at alchemy level three. And then one off the top of the deck. Ouch. That's a good one. Remember my ability, maybe. Okay. All right. So now this is your first fight turn. First fight turn. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
During your first fight turn, roll a die, depending on the effect, blah, blah, blah. Or, uh, draw two cards. Now. Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's go with. Oh, wow. Actually, what am I doing? There is more colors that match, Rob. <laughs> Wake up. Holy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that right? I one, think so. Three, four, five, six, wow, let's go here. Let's seven. Go. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I had a decent starting Jeez. turn. That's why I just started going That's to the very fight. Very good. But I drew an even better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow, I feel like almost dead. Okay. And then I draw one less card at the end of my turn. This will go to my discard pile. So I draw only one. Okay. Charge. The player takes three damage. One, two, three. Ouch. Ouchie, ouchie, ouchie. That hurts. Yep, that does hurt. All right. Combo. So I have all four connections here, so it goes into red, but there's nothing on them. So four damage. One, two, three. Four. Oh, okay. And then I draw one less card, but then plus two cards, so it's plus one, so I draw three. Uh-oh. Well, she's going to die when she goes, so I think you're fine. Yeah, just don't reduce one of my levels, please. Let's say bite. Three damage. One. And two, three. Oh, whatever. wow. One card left. That, that was a close, close one. Yeah. I could have pitched to do two damage on a potion, yes. but I was trying to okay. hold out. So the winner is you. Here's Yay. the trophy for you. Uh, once per fight, during your fight, you may discard one unused potion to draw two cards from your deck. Okay, so even potions that I don't have not use for now are useful. All right, we're putting you up here. You're going to be trashing three cards when you get to that Oh part. yeah, this is rough. Uh, three card trash, eh? One. Two. Mm. Three. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Now I'm down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bates to my starting ten. Card wow. life, but they're obviously better quality cards, I would hope. Maybe some synergies that I've taken out certain colors and attachments and symbols and have a focus, but... I think that's supposed to deter you from going just monster to monster yeah, yeah, fight. Yeah. So now I've got to be a chicken for a while and avoid any of these tier 3 monsters we're about to have. All tier 3, whatever this thing is. A uh, centipede of some kind. Oh. Interesting. And I still have to finish getting rewards, I believe. Yes, you, but, have, uh, yes, you do. It's like, I can never remember what they all are, but... Um, but I do want to get a monster, because that's part of it, right? Oh no, it's... <laughs> During the entire fight, each time the player's combo includes a fast attack, which mm -hmm. is a blue card, the player deals one damage less. Oh, oh. so you gotta hit it with big hit. Look at the hand. Oh. Oh, there's another one. Look at the guys are getting crushed by this like snake like monster thing. Or is it this thing? It's going oh, I think it's this thing. Yeah, it's going at 15. Oh, I got that. Creepy. Uh, 15 right here. At the snake school. All right. Uh, two gold, right? Yep. I don't think I grabbed yet. A trophy. Anything else? Oh, my defense level goes up to its big gold two. And then I go to phase three. Yep. Drawing three cards. And trying to get cards back in my deck. 
So blues aren't as good anymore if you're going to fight that monster. Uh, but... Hmm. I think I'll just take this free 99 one right here. Yeah. I think. Do one for this. Damage a card draw in tons of connections. No, let's go for this one. The hand, right? Yeah. Okay. okay, I'm going to spend a water, and I'm going to go here to a school where I will increase my alchemy. So I'll spend three, and I'll gain a potion. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I will spend a water, and I will go here where I will increase my defense level since it's the same as my level. I'll bring my shield up by one. And then I will, uh, I will, I will actually spend a card and a gold to go here to gain one more potion. Okay, and then I will end my turn there where I will choose a city card. For several days now, you've had a creeping feeling that people have been rather strange towards you or rather strange than usual. At your sight, mothers call back their children, and windows shutters, window shutters are slammed closed as you pass. Finally, you encounter a young man with a loot who was happy to explain. There's this bard who's made you the subject of his ballads. It's just that. He's not very fond of witchers. I think in his songs, you have a sharp fang, steel children, and fart roaring fire. Option A. Ask where you can find the bard. Or B, tell the young man about your adventures so he can compose ballads based on truth. B. B, the man is quick to agree and has a few verses ready by the time you finish your tale. He's also happy to pay for your stories. Gain two gold. Yeah, okay. I can find all the gold in this game. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> They're all gold. Okay, and then I'll draw my three. And then I wanted to do that into that probably. Okay, so... I think I will go with, I think I will, sp oh, that's... what is that, sorry, okay, I will spend, oh, nothing, this is free, I'll just take this one, okay, done, all right, What is the plan? Okay, I'm gonna say forest. I think is the play. And I'm gonna spend go three gold to raise our defense level. And I'll go water. Mm. No, maybe not. Maybe mountain. 
Yeah, let's go mountain. Gain a potion. No more two cards. Okay. And let's go water. And then we'll play some poker. Oh, no. I have a pair of twos. You have a pair of ones? Yep. Okay. I have three three or three twos, and those are different. Uh huh. There's three of a kind, which are twos. And I've lost this, I think. I don't know. What do we get here? Probably nothing. One, three, four, five, six. Bunch of nothing, right? No. I lose. Oh, my gold's gone, which I did already, right? Yeah. I yeah, I just never put there. it out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I already saw it coming. Okay, and then... Probably shouldn't. Let's go. Let's go tree two plus gold. No, only money. Mm, yeah, let's just spend a gold. We'll go here and I'll raise our combat level. By one. Okay, Fanito, let's go city. You make your way through a dense crowd. You hear calls for freedom for all, mixing with demands to send freaks to reservations. You ask a girl standing next to you what's going on. 20 men at arms arrived here three days ago, she says, struggling to be heard over the din of the crowd. They barged into our old Jari's hut and dragged his daughter outside. People say they were going to hang her. She was a, she was a strange girl, that girl. Sorry, she was strange, that girl. When she screamed, shingles on rooftops shook and fell. But that's what's been unleashed here ever since those men came. It's hell. A, draw your sword and shatter the anti- non-human demonstrators or b find out where you can find the girl uh find the girl you learn uh you learn the likely location of the captor the captors sorry quest is a mountain and when you enter it it's number 24. number nine number nine where are you oh nine's where i am okay 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 so draw three Yeah, Edward's saying, gameplay seems pretty samey. Move, attack, level up, evenly, rinse and repeat. I told you this game was super basic with the Kickstarter, high production, expensive, polish and coding. But overall, yes, it's a very simple game, like, for sure. It's definitely not as complex as the other adventure games we, we've played that I mentioned at the beginning of the stream. But uh, it's not a bad thing. Again, remember, it's like the Witcher audience, right? Maybe just watch a Netflix show, maybe aren't heavy board gamers. It's not that bad to learn. It's smooth. You know, I, I don't mind it. But again, there's expansions. 
And supposedly some of them are must play with, according to the chat. So maybe they make it more complex or more interesting. Uh, but I think it's fine for what it is so far. And I'm going to look at these cards and pick something. Let's go with I don't know. I'll just take this free one. Okay, go ahead. All right. I'm going to spend a water and a gold to move here. Then I will spend three gold, one, two, three, to level up my combat, which will and in turn level me up, where I will draw a card. Okay, now I draw that. Okay, I will then spend a mountain. Going to here where I will draw a potion, which is my fourth. And I will end my turn here and initiate combat with this thing. Striga! I just take two cards out of there. I feel like I might not be ready for this guy, but uh, I mean, I'm going to try. You still get something out of it. It's like not like you get destroyed, I don't think. No, but it just level three. But, oh, you'll learn. If he fully destroys you, you'll get a trail token for him. Mm hmm. You'll learn something about him, but if you kind of beat him, or kind of lose to him slightly, he'll run away off the board and we'll get a new enemy. I feel like if, I don't have enough cards for this, but we're going to see. We're going to see if I'm a level 3 fighter or not. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, so before the player creates their life pool, they lower their shield level by one for each card you have so in hand. three. One, two, three. Okay. And then, uh, before creating your life pool, if you have zero or one cards, I don't have three. Okay. Did you end your turn? Oh, I, you I will, yeah, turn yet. But, yeah, yeah. Okay. Any potions? Oh, he goes first, He goes right? first, yeah, I don't have that trick. Uh, let's do bite. Three damage. Okay. One two, three. Okay. So I'm hoping that I can do some fun things here. So I have three damage to him. And One, then... two, three. Okay. Then I have two shields, but my armor says each time you play a dodge green card during the fight, uh, it additionally raises your shield by one, which I can take. Nice. Wow. Then I will gain two additional cards. So I'll be able to draw four, and then this one comes back to my hand. Oh, I see. You got lucky <laughs> yeah, on that, and the, your hand at the start. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's why You're I gonna crush this. That's probably. why I paid the gold to move. As so long that, as you can do enough damage, you'll I know, probably be which fun. I don't know if I can. Wow. Yeah, but we're gonna try. Okay. Uh, I will say charge. No, I'll say bites. Five damage. Oh my gosh. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I might not be able to if they keep discarding my damage cards. Okay. That's too bad, Mel. I hope you can win. Maybe I can just. I don't think I actually can, but maybe you I can, can get him down to one, two, one him. or two or one one or zero cards. You can still get some goodies. Let me whittle him down. Good test to see if you're ready for a level three monster yet, and know where you have to. I don't think I am, but and it's good that you're you're doing this mistake before I make it. So I definitely realize I need to probably power up too. I mean, I can actually do a pretty big combo here, but I the is this the guy with the oh no, he's not the blue cards that are lowered. Hold on. Listen to this. Into this. Into this. Into this. I can play all my cards in a combo here. Oh, I should do it because I don't know. Yeah, but then I'm probably going to die because I only have one card left, but we'll see what happens here. You wreck them right now. I don't or know. Or you get a card back, too. Yeah, so my damage is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
Okay. Okay. Then let's see. I gain a card back from the top of my deck. He still has seven, I think, here. But he'll use one on his turn. This gives me the two plus the one, so I get back three shields. Hopefully that's enough to save me. You have potions, uh, too. Oh, yes. I totally forgot. I probably should have looked at those. Uh, this still gives, all good. I get two additional cards. I only have one in my hand here. Or my deck. And I did, did, I did that. Top yep. discard? And I did that. And we got all that. This one comes back to hand. Yeah, this one comes back to hand. So we'll see if we'll be able to combo anything. Okay. With the uh, let's go bite. Player ta lowers their alchemy level by one. And then takes because level three monster two damage. Okay. We're still in. Let me actually look at these because he said, yeah, he should have five now, right? Uh, uh, six. Six health. He's an ugly mu muscle hamster. Ah. Yeah, I guess that's the way to describe him. Okay, this is going to be a full... We're going to, like, hang on by a thread here and see what happens. So we're going to... Remember, heal. you can only play up to two potions in combat. These ones I can't, because they're all draw cards. I don't have a deck. Oh. But this one I can play. So deal one damage, and during this fight turn, only, you may only play one car combo card. Okay, he's down to five health. So I'll just play that. Which will give me my shields to three, and then this will go back to my hand. I don't have anything to draw. Oh, I see what you're doing. Okay, I'm going to say bite. Lower your defense level. Oh, so right now, so then this goes down, right? I, does it, though? I don't know. Does anyone know, without us having to look up in the rules, if she lowers her defense, does her shield go down? I don't think so, but maybe it does. I know it goes up when you move up, but I feel like it wouldn't move down. Um... Then it says you take two damage because of monster level three. Okay. And I'm so sorry. How much health? Uh, four left, I think. Oh, my God. Okay, this is going to be literally the skin of my teeth. So let's do... Actually, yeah, let's do that. That will give two damage. This will give me up to... I can only go up to two shields. Okay. Oh, this goes back to my hand. Sorry. And this goes in my discard. I have two cards this turn. And then after this, if I can survive this turn, he only has one. And I can potentially kill him. Go ahead. Uh, bite. Only two damage? Yes. No yes. way. Yes. 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 No then way. I can do that and I can kill him. Jeez. You are so lucky. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. That was so cool. Because <laughs> I didn't have, that was my last damage card. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so I would have had to just hope I could out-survive so him with this. So lucky. <laughs> wow. Lame. <laughs> oh my god. This is discarded. <laughs> uh, so his uh, trophy says, During the entire fight, each strong attack red card that you use in a combo deals one additional damage. Oh, okay. This is going to go up and I'm going to have to trash three cards, so I'm in big trouble here. What? Uh, What's wrong? Did I do something no, wrong? No, no, no. It's all good. It's all good. Oh, okay. So yeah, that little armor combo. I know way. it's so good, especially with this so, ability. Okay. But now that I've dropped below, I can't go. Oh man, because that's my now only. It's a race. Whoever gets the last trophy with by fighting. Oh my god. Do I just go fight Mel and try to kill her for her trophy? No, no. I, I know some, how that's how that some pretty good out. combo with uh, happening. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Right. Uh, this one, I think. So it, you beat it. Did you get your two gold? I did not, and I'm just trashing my cards right now. I just oh, need yeah. a quick Three second. Three cards, yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna really uh, impact my deck here. Yep. Which I think it's gonna be that one. That one. And that one. All right. Three cards. Gone. Okay, our new monster is this dude Bruis. during the entire fight each time the player's combo includes dodge green or defensive sign yellow the player deals one less damage so this is not for me this yeah time. yeah avoid this guy mel <laughs> don't fight him he's in the mountain number 13. mountain number 13 he's right here that guy okay thank you okay <laughs> so i am on a mountain so at this uh end uh, or my, for my phase three i'm gonna draw four cards one two three four and then let's see what I can buy here that will work with my. Hmm. Where am I? 
Uh, right there. Okay. So I need that one. That's fine. All right. I'm going to actually discard two for this one. All right. What's the play? What's the play? What am I doing? I don't know. They're all level three left, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right, let's just do this. Let's go mountain. Get a potion. Okay. And now I'll stay there and fight Mel. Just kidding. Oh, just I thought kidding. you were really going to do that. Tricked ya. I was like, what an epic ending if it's like no. a Witcher versus Witcher fight. But it wouldn't end unless I win, unless you win. and gain a trophy. Yes. If I lose, it doesn't end. And Correct. Then, and then you just smash me, but uh, we wouldn't be able to fight there again. So I would at least be protected for a little bit. Uh, then I'll just toss water. Mm, water. Mm, no water. Oh, Ultra V Lettuce says just a quick rules check. There is nothing that says lower when you lower your defense, you have to lower yeah, your chips. Okay, I, that's yeah. perfect. I couldn't I remember if that thing. was the case, just the other way around. I just thought since it affected Mel, nobody ever says that it's a thing that's negative towards her. But if I try to do it, people would automatically be just making it up as a rule to tell me I have to lower it. <laughs> it was funny whenever I asked, like, oh, does this work that way? No one no answers. No one says anything. Yeah, everyone's quiet. But if I try to touch anything wrong, it's like, Rob, no, you're cheating. Yeah, you get like uh, yeah, super yeah. chats that are like, yeah, Rob, yeah. you did it wrong. And they it's really like, want you to know. I know, man. Everyone's <laughs> always against me, which I don't mind being the villain. I'm totally okay with that. And we're playing better. That's fine. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I spent a water, so I'll just go down here. Oh, you don't have any money no, to play poker. No money, but that's fine. I would lose anyway, as I've learned. Uh, then I'll spend another water. I'll go here, and here I can up my special to finally make it not so crappy. And then I raise my level because all my little stats are at that level. So it raises up, I draw a card. Mm -hmm. See you later, Brian. Brian, bye. I need to get going, so I'll leave you with the following. Uh -oh. Typing something. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm intrigued by this one. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, that guy says during a fight each side of player's combo is a dodge green or yellow it is nasty. probably not good I don't have the beefy deck I once had I could go there to start a trail Get a gold, but maybe then gamble next turn. Maybe up some stat. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Let's go. Oh, but then you might just go and fight next turn and it's over. Hide. And if I fight and lose, I'm set back. Oh, I guess you can go to nine to do your quest. Nine to do my quest? Which is right up here. Yeah, that's a thing. True. Yeah, that does get me something, hopefully. Hopefully not a punishment. That was. Oh, you're, you're finding the girl. Yeah, okay. I guess. Uh, Don't sound like you want to do that. I, well, I, I kind of like have Pretty a card. far away from the action. Yeah, I could go here to fight. Yeah, one, I looked at that earlier at the start of my turn when I was way down here and was like, I don't think I want to go all the way over there at all, but it is a thing. It doesn't give me money. It will give me a potion, though. And I don't know what else it gets me, but hopefully it's not bad. All right. 
but I have a feeling it'll be like, you find the girl and she's with a monster, lower some level token thing, and then you're <laughs> now screwed for your next fight. Like, uh, Crash a card. Yeah. So I, I'll do it, just because Edgar says so, but I don't feel good about it. <laughs> I'm going to draw a potion. Oh. Yeah, cool. just raise your shield by one. Like, come on, these are kind of, I mean, they're what they are, I guess. Okay. And then I'm here, so let's do this. Uh, enter 24. Oh, there's, there's uh, some, some choice. choices on here. Cool. The town greets you with pouring rain. A lovely beggar stands at the gate. They're hanging her today in the square, he declares with glee. They'll be bringing the sorcerers out any moment now. From jail to the gallows, they'll all, sorry, that's all that await the freaks. Uh, go to the main square or go to jail. Like, go to the main square or go to the jail. Sorry, I was reading chat. They're talking about rules and stuff. I'm like lost. Sorry. No problem. Okay. I'm so sorry for it's not. Totally, totally okay. But I'm like, when I see like we may have been playing something wrong, it's like I, I want to know. But I think it's just the defense thing. Keith, okay. Keith, if you can find a page for that, page 18, we'll look at that in a second. Okay, perfect. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. The town greets you with pouring rain. <laughs> uh, lonely beggar stands at the gate. They're hanging her in the square today, he declares with glee. They'll be bringing the sorceress out at any moment from the jail to the gallows and all that awaits the freaks. Go to the main square or go to the jail? Burn the witch! Uh, to go to the main square? No. Uh, Brig. Go to the jail? Go to the jail. <clears throat> You reach the building just in time to see it collapsing. There are frailing silhouettes among the rising clouds of dust. But the time you reach them, it's all over. And you find there's you find the dusty and terrified girl sitting amongst, amongst right, the bodies of dread, dead soldiers. It's time to go. Draw 20. And during the phase three, draw one card less. Time to go. Oh my god, is she gonna be friend? your friend? Let me peek at it before you. Yeah. Oh my god. Companion. You saved her. Companion, leave this card in front of you. The girl has short, mousy hair and eyes, as round as Termanian orange. She really should be placed in care of a sorceress, but she trusts you and you alone. She's terrified at the very idea of leaving your side. She has been using her gift whenever she felt threatened since she was a small child. Now her vast, uncontrollable powers have become a double edged sword. Once per fight, during your first fight turn, you may choose to roll a die, depending on the result, perform the following effect. Oh, she's doing damage for you. But I would take, oh, take I could, oh, take, you could damage. take damage. <gasps> so she might not even help she me. She might accidentally hurt you. This is stupid. <laughs> See, I told you I'd get something not as good. <laughs> Edgar. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, thanks, Edgar. I blame Edgar. Uh, yeah, but I may do it. So I don't have to, but I mean, come on. It's I mean, that's gambling. Fine. You got to do it. Uh, but Brian did say, uh, check out the next episode of The Witcher, same Witcher time, same old world channel. <laughs> oh, sorry, go a little bit up. Oh. That's his. Uh, we'll need, will Mel need an intervention when she continues gambling on dice poker on sketchy online betting sites? <laughs> will Rob finally understand that the size of the deck does matter? <laughs> check out the next episode of The Witcher, same Witcher time, same old world channel. Yeah, so again, those watching the next episode, we'll do this after Gen Con, so probably in a couple weeks, we'll play with Kyle, I assume, unless we don't play with Kyle the week after Gen Con, maybe we'll play it again, oh, yeah. or I'll play it solo or something, but we're going to play more of it. Check the playlist down below in the video description if you're looking for the next episodes. Nothing scheduled at this moment, but uh, I'll probably schedule the Kyle one, and if we have to move it, we move it. Um, but yeah, this is what we'll play on our next Kyle night when we play three-player, and it'll be just the base game, I think. Unless we don't play them for a couple, like three or so weeks, then we might have mixed in an expansion or right. something and we'll play that with him. But yeah, yeah. I want to show him the game and I'd like to show him the game in the best uh, new player friendly format possible. So yeah, but we'll see. The little girl just doesn't like Rob. Yeah, we'll yep. see. Sorry, but this card is perfect. 
if you can roll a die. Yeah, if you roll good, it's great. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's good if I'm lucky, but we've yeah. seen how that works. I'll take it from you. <laughs> so, uh, oh, the rules. Page 18 about the dice thing. Thank you, Keith. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's good if we figure it out. I'm sure people have left comments we're watching later. As soon as we ask that rule, there's like oh, comments yeah. and then yeah. we figure it out later. Um, yes, Ultravioletta. Oh my god, three players. Witcher fight with placing wagers. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's why I want to see the part. wagering. It'd be funny. Uh, oh yeah, it's in this little note right here. When you lower your defense as a result of exploration or event card. Oh, but it doesn't say during a fight. Yeah, I feel like in a fight it was different. Doesn't right? say during a fight though. Doesn't say during a fight. Is, is there something else on this page where it says about fighting? Or is maybe in the fight section there's a part? Oh, Keith says, just to be clear, I wasn't saying you were doing anything wrong. I just wanted to point the situation oh, where it did affect okay. you. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, gotcha, perfect. Yeah, so I think this is good. We did it correctly, I believe. Okay. So yeah, in a fight, you can get lowered. Some things do lower your shield. Obviously, attacking does, and the shield gets reset at the end of the fight. But if outside of combat, if your exploration card or an event card... Event card? Event card are like these. Oh, yeah, yeah. So event card, exploration card, I get it. Then you must put your shield down. So it's like... It hurts you uh, now and for the next fight, basically. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. Okay. Thank you, Keith. Either way, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Joe says, page 24 says your shield can't go above your defense. Yeah, because I think it says, like, you can't physically go above, but if it yeah. lowers, I don't think okay. it tells you to lower it as a result. Oh, but no, but what Joe's thinking, then, if it can't go above it, then how is it ever higher? You can't put it above. Ooh, now you're, like, just playing with words. I don't know. That's what I thought I understood, but... There is an FAQ, but I don't remember reading about that, but maybe it's in there. Yeah, raising your shield level. Like, it's talking about when you raise your... No, it just says, no, your shield level may never go above your defense value. I, I don't think you can ever buff it up above. I think e even if a card gives you bonus shields, it's never going higher. So those, those potions and abilities matter more later. Like when you're, you want to be at a higher level okay. to use them. Do we think, did it affect it? Because I did have one more card I could have pitched if I needed to. No, if I, I don't care. It's fine. I, I don't care if like it matters for you win a fight or not right now. No, but I think. But if, now we're learning. Yeah, okay. Like, I don't know. I'm not going back it, to check that. Who right, cares? right, right. It's fine. It's fine. I think it was okay because I had two cards. Ultra Violetta, we'll get there. All right. I'll, oh, I still went. Okay. I'll do a little ranting about the things that annoy me about this game and what I like about the game when we're done. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I better start thinking, That's, uh, thinking that of may be my one thoughts of them. then. Maybe one of them, as I already hinted at earlier when we had to use the player uh, version of the index. Or uh, yeah, fan, fan made one. Okay, uh, what was happening? You were doing your event. Oh, here. yes. And I still had a card in hand, so I could do something else. Uh, could go back to forest. Sure. I'll just go back to this forest spot, toss this card, and not do the ability because I have no money. I'm broke. Then let's go explore the wilderness, I guess. Like, which will give me something now, and what will give it, me a quest? No, they're all going to be garbage for me. I'm not lucky, but we'll see. Okay. The old woman's chambers smell like fresh herbs. You notice a mortar and pestle on the kitchen sideboard. The woman must be confused with, must have been, must, sorry, blah, blah. the woman must have confused you with one of her grandchildren. Who in their right mind would ask a witcher to help retrieve a skillet loaded, loaned to their neighbors? A, ask the neighbor nicely to return the skillet, or B, firmly ask the neighbor to return the skillet. How nice are you, my witcher? Firmly. Firmly, so B. Probably bad. But... You enter the neighbor's cottage by ramming down the door. The man re returns the skillet along with two pots just to apologize. <laughs> the old woman is amazed at your skill for, skill for, skillful persuasion. Draw up to four potions. I already have four potions. <laughs> well, That's don't go ramming nice... down the door. The other oh. one probably would have been dropped two potions, and either way, this is useless for Draw me. Draw one and a gold. Oh, okay. I couldn't, use, I couldn't use the gold, maybe, but... 
<laughs> All useless. I'm not as lucky as you, so well, I just get crappy cards. Yeah. All right, let me draw up. And then I will look at some cards here. I'm just looking at stuff for preparation. I'll just take this zero, maybe. Or do I take the one? Yeah, oh, where am I? What am I doing? Go big. I don't know how good it is though. It's three less card draw. Probably bad. Bad, bad, bad. But whatever. All right. Good. And uh, sure. All right. I'm going to send a mountain. And I'm going to go down here. Okay. And I'm going to increase my combat. All right. And then I'm going to go. I'm going to spend a tree. Or forest. I'm gonna go in here where I will spend uh three, one, two, three to increase my defense. And I'm gonna stop here and we'll see what happens. I don't think I'm ready for this, but I have to try before Rob does. Fighting the hang. Fight the hang. <laughs> here you go. I'm just gonna get my 17 cards, eh? Oops. During each monster fight turn that the monster has only one or two cards in their deck. It's attack deals two additional damage. Yeah, so I need to, my last few turns have to do. Oh, so you can't do the trolling where you just keep blocking and leaving her weak. No. You have to actually like make sure you finish her else she'll rip you apart. Yeah. Okay. So. I don't have a trail token. She's going to go first. But so it could be for the oh, game. Oh, shoot. Does it, I was supposed to do, um, before creating my life plus, let's draw two cards. Do yeah. You, I. Oh, it was before I created my life pool. I don't know what was in my discard pile. Do you oh, care? Do you want no. to just... Go ahead. Dude, it's fine. It's random, right? I don't it's know. Fine. It's fine. It's not to risk so the Tiger win. Yeah. You obviously cheated. It's fine. If you win this fight, you lose because so, you're disqualified. Yes. Before creating your life pool, if you have zero, which I only had, or I had or one card in your hand, draw two cards. So I have now... Sure. Sorry. Mm. We can... No, it's fine. I'm so sorry. I'm not going back trying to figure out what was in your hand and discard and stuff. Okay. Massive asterisk. Yes, Edward. I know. I'm so sorry. Massive. Because I, I don't read these until after. It's just like, like. Oh. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 health. Three cards off to the side. Okay. And the only other thing I need to remember is during the entire fight, each of my strong, which are my red cards uh, that you use in a combo, deal one additional damage. Oh, wow. Okay. And a single card is a combo. Okay, I have some potions that I can use if I need, and we'll see what happens here. Okay, uh, so you're not I, going first, no, right? I'm not. Let's do a charge. Uh, you take four damage. Ooh. One, two. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now I'll do at the start of my turn. I will look at three. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, I got lucky there. Taking this one. Taking this one. Putting that here. I think. 
I'm going to. Dan says the only way to equalize that mistake is to give Bru Bruja uh, two extra health. No, <laughs> no. Oh my God. Back if Mel wins, she's on the coach tonight. Yes, yes, that's right. Into this. Into this. <laughs> I take, oh, I got to take this one. Rewind the tape. Rewind the tape. Okay, that's the problem is that this card is like off the screen too. So yeah, you'd have I'm to like, track sorry. every single card she like drew and played and all that. No, thanks. It's all good. I don't care that much. Okay, my turn. Yeah. Anything sure. else you want to do there? I can't do the. I don't want to lower my shield. I need to get my shield up though. Okay. I think we just got to try to go kind of big, and that will be this. I think is my whole entire hand. If I've set this up correctly. So purple, blue connection. This is a green connection. This is a yellow connection. This is a red connection. Yeah. Okay. So I have, th and this does one additional, this will do one additional damage. So yep. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whoa. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now let's just hope I can do that again. Okay. Then I get to draw the top card from my discard pile, which is that one. This comes back to my hand. Uh, and then this says I draw one less, but I draw two. So this is just one above my four. So I draw five. Five, yeah. And I have two, so that's my full seven. One, two, three, four, five. So now I get to choose. Oh, and then my shields, uh, which is back in my hand from that one. Sorry. So one, two, and then my armor gives me one additional. Okay. Two, three. Okay. Three. You only get damage from one of those connectors, not both. Oh, are you adding up like every hit? No, I only got one, one additional bonus from the red. The green didn't, the green didn't give me a connect, uh, it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then this has one additional for nine. Yeah, she she has a bonus. I, I don't know, maybe you guys are missing this. Right? She has one extra for that, right? Yeah, which is just this one. So this one is three technically. She has an extra she had a red card that got a plus one hit. I was well, counting the one, yellow. Two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I see. Sorry, eight, you're right. Eight. You're right. I did count one wrong. I did oh, count one wrong. This okay. one. So sorry. So she is full on cheating, as Dan says. Yeah. No, okay. Gotcha. I'm, try I'm yeah. so sorry. Big, I'm not. Ginormous elephant size asterisk on this win if she wins no, this fight. No. So you return. Big time. Just shuffle that. Cheater. No, shuffle that one back in. That would be the eighth oh. card. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Sure. Was it a nice, easy one? Hmm. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that, I promise you. He's saying you wouldn't count the damage on the blue connector. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I'm so sorry. So she was cheating. Just one. Coach, coach, coach. Yes. Jerry, Jerry. Right. I like feel like this crazy pressure. Yeah, you should. Oh, I can play my whole that's, game. That's what cheaters feel like. They go to the casino, they sweat. No. <laughs> and the security's looking at them, and they can detect your body level going up and stuff on those cameras. Oh, this is this what This is what cheaters, this is their body reaction when you cheat at things, Mel. No, I'm not trying to cheat, I promise you. Stress. There's lots of good traffic. Okay, go ahead. Have fun sleeping tonight. Trying to sleep tonight. I don't even know if I'm going to win this. I doubt it. All right. It does a lot of health. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Uh, let's go with um, Bite. Four damage. All right. One, two, three, and I have to get rid of a card. This will be one additional, so that's two. Okay, right in there. Poor Kyle's never going to have a chance. <laughs> It's fine. I think I gotta do that one. Was that into that? I think I lost this game when I picked the Yellow Witcher. That's what happens when I lost. <laughs> I picked the Bad Witcher. All right, this is my discarded card. Okay. All right, go. Play your turn. Combo off. Let's do it. Let's see what we got. So I'm so sorry. Can I ask you how much health this thing has? Because it's my. You can't reach that. I know. I'm just counting. One, two, at the same three, time. four, five, six, seven. Seven health. All right. One, two, uh -huh. four, five. Oh, I can do seven. Okay. I think if I play my whole hand again, let's count it out correctly this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So, I think so you win? Yep. Done. 
Boom. Move up on the trophy. You're the winner. Thank GG's, you. Mel. Ooh. GG's. You got it. Thank you. All right. That was the game play of The Witcher. Base game, trophy. deluxe version. No expansions. Painted by Mel. Thanks for painting that, Thank Mel. Thank you. No problem. Uh, let's go to... I think we can kind of... Maybe let's leave it on this screen in case we want to talk about anything. So we'll talk quickly about our thoughts. Can I just read one of Dan's things, which no, might be interesting? No, we don't read Dan's things. No, it's actually very interesting. So right. the house rule, we keep the monster's health under the table. It's a mystery unless you can do the math. It's better. So then you don't like plan out your turns as, I guess. Oh, okay. I could see that. Yeah. So I guess I could see, I could see that. It doesn't really tell you to do that, but like as a house rule, but yeah. But I feel like in this game so far, it's like you kind of are just always going to try to play the most damage on your turn no matter what. It's not like you're going to hold cards back probably, but maybe once you get to a higher level at the game, you would be doing that. Yeah. Once you master it. I uh, like that rule though. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. I guess. Yeah, or I could just say, I'm not saying it, and you just kind of have to look at the deck and guess it. But yeah, that could be a thing. That could be a thing. Because it would make a difference, potentially, on like what cards you discard in the event of being able to choose for your damage. Yeah, okay. Okay, sorry, uh, go uh, ahead. Mel, what are your thoughts about the game? Give us positives, negatives, what you feel overall. How After two plays, how do you feel about this game compared to other board games, compared to other adventure games we played? As someone who's watched some of the Witcher show, mm -hmm. like you know kind of where the theme is coming from. So thematically, I think it's very done very well, I, I think. Um, I don't remember from the show, like the actual enemies that were fought, but like the thematics of The Witcher itself, I feel like is, is thematic. Um, I love, one of the things I really, really love about this game, and I feel like I, I try to do it as best I can, is like building your efficient deck. Um, so when you have your 10 cards, the cards that you're putting into your deck, making sure that they combo with other cards, the cards that you're trashing, make sure that you're not breaking combos that are definitely needed. So when I was trying to trash, I was trying to trash a lot of the same colors so that I wouldn't have to worry about cards that I couldn't play or they only had one card that I could combo it to. Um, I really, really like that part of the game. And I also really like how the cards cost varies. And as it comes down the row, it gets cheaper so maybe you're like, oh, I don't want to pay two or in the, in the event of like this one, it's plus one. I don't want to pay three, but I also don't want it to get to somewhere in the middle where then Rob buys it before yeah, me. Yeah. So I really, really like this card row and the, the, the way that they, uh, the way that you build your deck. I really like this part of the game. But itself. it's just standard deck building, right? Like it's yeah, like but you're it, just trying to build an engine. I, yeah, but then there's like the trashing. And if you trash the wrong card out of your deck, but then you have a card that you have to let start it as a combo or it doesn't work with the rest of your cards, right? True. Like, yeah, in, you could mess with the colors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I was able to play almost my whole hands every time because I was trying to oh, make I know. That great was combos yep, yep. as I was pulling cards. Like I, I would know what colors I'm looking for. Yeah, there's that battle of like, do I take the thing with the flashy effect but with no attachment? Yeah. Or take the thing that has like a ton of attachments but no effects on them? Right. But it's like, man, I don't, I don't, it depends what you're building for. It depends what colors you have. It depends what your special is and what items you have and potions you have. There's so much to think about. I love it. Yeah. And one thing I didn't really think about at all when I was um, buying cards from the row was the uh, terrain type on those cards because I always, always had so much gold oh, that I knew I, I could throw you, away yeah. any card and I could move with, with a card and a gold, yeah. which um, definitely kind of helps later in the game when you're trying to run around. I did think, though, that you were going to have it because I did think you were going to try a battle last turn. I was. Just to see if you could beat me, which I was like... Oh, and I thought you were also going to fight me when you landed on no, my face. I was going to go after this monster probably, and then I was just going to set myself up to go, like, uh, here. Mm. But then Edgar said that, and I was like, it's oh, more yeah. fun. Let's see where it goes. I, I kind of didn't care if I won. I felt like... You got so lucky at the beginning. You have the better Witcher power, and you had endless gold. Yeah, I did get which a lot is of based gold. on that. That's what I feel you were lucky on. Yeah. I, everything I, I, every poker dice game I played, I lost. Every card option I chose, so it's my fault too. I, I, I didn't feel like I was getting flooded in money. And when you get don't have money, you can't move around as flexibly. You can't level up your stats as flexibly. Um, play poker as often and like lose a few, win a few, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's hard. Like you could have gone for the, with all the money you had, you could have really focused on a, um, med uh, meditation. Trophy. I was thinking about that. Yeah. I was thinking I'm about that. I'm surprised you didn't. I thought that's where you're going to go. And I was going to be like, crap, I can't stop her on that other than trying to play poker with you. But with your luck, I'm going to lose every time and just giving you money. Like 
I don't want to give you money. But I was trying to fight the lower level monsters when they were out and it was available because then I thought once they get into higher levels, it's going to be a lot more of a challenge. Um, the other thing, I do really like the ex exploration, like these, these um, I like them. Mm -hmm. They're really cool. I can see why you would want expansions to kind of, as you play through this, you might start to hear some of the same cards. However, if you pick a different option than you picked before. So I do like that, how it can give you um, different but items all, and stuff. Also related to that though is, and we said this when we were backing it on GameFound, we said, even if this uh, replayability aspect where some people might see this as like, oh, it's a set number of little cards. Once you play it enough, You'll know all the answers and which options to choose and stuff yeah. like that. But the thing is, realistically, if you, that's only if you played this game like every couple days back to back for like a month straight, you know? Yeah. But the way we play board games is our next time we're even going to play this isn't for like two weeks from now. We're not going to remember yeah, all those we'll options. No. We don't know the theme that well. We don't know all the characters' names and things. Mm -hmm. We don't care. So if you're only playing this like once a month or you pull it out once a year or a couple times a year, like more realistically, m the average board gamer plays it or have it sit and shrink on your shelf staring at you like most Kickstarter backers do, uh, you're not even going to see any of these. So you don't have to worry about remembering and seeing spoilers. I, I don't think you need the expansions to beef these up. No. But it's obviously designed as these are very expandable. Yes. Like very 100%. expandable. Yeah. Um, I love the potion system. I think they're great. I think they're, uh, there's a lot of duplicates, which is great. So if you are looking for something and you see someone else pull it, you can still keep looking. I like, I like the mechanic of you can only play the amount of potions based on your level. Like I love, I love a lot of that stuff. So I just really, overall, I think I really, really enjoy the game. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I, I really like it. All the, uh, sorry, last thing, all the games, the two games that we've played have felt very different as well. I, yeah, I yeah. feel like, yep. um, so yeah. That's my thoughts, I guess. I don't really that's, have... That's your stuff? I guess, because I, I know, I think I know one of the negatives that you're saying. I don't what really do you like about the game? What's annoing? What, what do you wish really could like... be better? How could you feel it could improve at all? But again, you don't know what expansions exist. Right, So you right. don't know if it's already so I, improved, I, you know? Like, that's the problem. Yeah. But again, we're just talking about the base game. Only played it twice. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Opinions can change after multiple plays. Either go positive or go negative. Or adding in expansions can make a game worse. More convoluted, bad setup, ruin rules, make them more broken. Especially if a publisher doesn't support with updating their FAQ with expansion FAQ and stuff. To be uh, honest, questions, frequently asked questions. To be honest, the gameplay, like I don't think there is much I would change. Like I, I enjoy the game for what it is. Um, Miles, thank you for subscribing. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Yeah, I don't think I really have much that I would change. I, I agree with. Uh, I think what your negative is. So go ahead. So the only reason we only did the deluxe version, because that's what was in the crowdfunding. A lot of people said to get this game, check out this game. It's like other games we played. It's adventure. It's fantasy. I like The Witcher. So instead of waiting for retail, which I probably should have done, it would have been much cheaper. I don't need these minis. I am totally fine if this was on the board instead. Oh, yeah. In this kind of game, yeah. Totally fine. It, it makes it easier, too, when there's way more Witchers on the table and we're playing like four or five players, which will happen. I want to make that happen. Not on stream, but it'll probably happen off stream. Uh, with some family and friends but um it's just less clutter on the board too but it may be not as easy to see where the monsters are but they are nice and white they pop off the board i have no problem with these tokens but just to say like the retail version is all of this but minus uh these minis basically i think and minus some plastic tokens that replace cardboard but like who cares about those oh yeah i don't care about that um but i just want to touch on that so the minis are cool they're great they're fine but they are fiddly. Having to find the mini. Oh, yeah. When you don't know which mini it is and which monster. And then putting them away. You can just look on the bottom to see a number, which I do love. That is nice. I guess I guess that would be my negative. I wish there was like a small number on here to kind of match them. Yes. But Or, or on the token. Or on the token, Again, yeah. I talked about that before. I wish the token just had a little number in the corner or a name along the bottom. Uh, so I know which card or which mini I'm looking for somehow. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it's just an annoyance. I'm sure it's even more annoying for people who have like all the expansions and have tons of monster trays and everything. And I'm sure it's them. worse if they're gray. Y yeah. Because then it's harder to even tell yeah. which is which. But it's fine. That's either or. That's personal taste and preference. But I, I would like, I would have not had a problem buying the retail version of this game because all these cards are pretty much the same. The boards, everything um, from what I looked at. And I think for what it is, looking at it as an $80 US, like we looked at earlier in the stream, $80 US base game. Definitely a solid package. Very nicely done. Uh, one thing I like is the graphic design, the quality of minis, the quality of card, uh, like the graphic design on the cards, the art they chose. This is as close as you can get to feeling like I'm playing a Fantasy Flight Games production, like an older production. You know, one of those, like when I first got in the hobby, 
those games, I always mention this because they're the first company I experienced in modern gaming. They're the games I fell in love with. I love their way they took IP seriously. I love the way it feels like gamers and artists and graphic designers there are top notch. They get great art in their games. Their games always look very polished, solid, premium, high quality on your table. This has that feeling. I do not get the feeling of this was a Kickstarter. As most of the ma and pa designed, rough around the edges, poorly translated to Kickstarters, we get a lot of those and cost cut and delays and they get in over their head. This one, yes, there was tons of delays, but it feels like the game is pretty polished and clean. I didn't find many typos, erratas. The rule book kind of made, kind of made sense. There's some ambiguities. The rule book is like the weakest part of it all. Um, but uh, overall, it's very polished for if I'm thinking just the $80 game that we played, that's a pretty damn beautiful $80 game. Mm -hmm. I do love dual layer cardboard. I'm assuming that's in the retail version, I would hope. But I don't know for sure. I couldn't tell. But uh, if it is, that's pretty nice. Like the components are pretty nice. $160 version with minis. If you like minis and painting, maybe. Yeah, that's kind of a, a tough push. But yeah. um, that's that, like a that's, personal preference, I guess. Yeah, that seems a little expensive for the game you're playing. Because again, this game is very simple with this base game. It is very straightforward. It is kind of the most boring of the adventure games I've played from that aspect. I still have fun because there's lots of cards to explore, but already two in, I, I was feeling what Edward was feeling. It's very repetitive. It feels like you're always just getting stuff, you're being leveled up, and it's like whoever just takes the action first and fights faster or whatever. Uh, but there you could lose it, get set back. There's a race to it, maybe two player. It feels kind of not as interesting than having four or five witchers running around the board. Maybe it gets more crazy. But it is only like four or five or something different potions in here. Like we're mm -hmm. kind of seeing some of the same stuff there. Uh, it's very simple. But again, I like games to be simple to learn and teach. And you got to remember the new player. You got to remember the player who is maybe coming after this for the Witcher IP. You don't want to overwhelm them. You don't want to be making it hard to get to the table. You don't want to have them looking in the rule book the whole time they're playing and, and getting frustrated, right? So I do like the simplicity of it. I like how clean it is. I like how I can pull this out in six months and I could have it on the table and be playing it and teaching it. In like 45 minutes, I could read the rule book and be totally refreshed how it works because it's not that crazy. So there is that aspect of it, but I'm still playing a premium looking fantasy game, running around a map, discovering quests, making choices, fighting, leveling up stats, you know, uh, playing poker. <laughs> um, yeah, all, all that kind of stuff, which uh, I think is awesome for the price of like 80 bucks, 160, double the cost for some minis. I think that's kind of a rip. But uh, again, it's, I, I don't know. But that's personal preference up to you for that one. Um, but again, I'm looking forward to playing expansions. Now my three negatives that bother me, I remember two, but now I'm, maybe one wasn't even that important. They're kind of nitpicky, okay? You know me, sometimes nitpicky stuff really sets me off. Sometimes I don't care as much if it's like, compared to all the positives in a game, it's not that offensive. But one of them is kind of the rules and the fact that this beautiful rule book laid out very well. The English translation is pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty clear. I only had a couple questions. There's an FAQ that goes beyond answering the dumbest questions I've ever seen asked for a board game, but some that need to be asked. But it's still, even if you're not sure, even those kind of, no question's really a dumb question, but some of the questions in there, I'm like, why is that even being asked? It's answered like 16 times in the rule book. Um, it still is there to, you know, reinstate the rule. So... It, it it covers it. The only problem is while you're playing and just want to look something up, there's no index at all. I was blown away that a 36 page rule book doesn't even have like a half assed index. Just tell me where to turn for combat. Tell me where to turn for what a player's turns like. Just at least give me like a table of contents with like four items in it or something. There is nothing. So you're flipping through 36 pages trying to find where sections are and stuff. And if you haven't read the rule book recently, you might not remember the order of it. There's nothing, no table of contents, no index, no anything. That is sad. For a $180 game or people paid $300 on Kickstarter, they couldn't even use whatever software they put together to develop a, you know, they don't even have to do work to make an index nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact there is they want to save money on one page, uh, putting it in that box full of miniatures and tokens and upgrades and all that stuff. Why there's no index, that needs to be fixed and like fixed right away. They need to make their own index and, and release a PDF and next printings need an index because that is stupid.
We're still not getting index pages. Oh, okay. But anyways, yeah, it, it's sad. I know. In, yes, Kate, in 2023 for expensive Kickstarters that get delayed for months and months and months and years and years and years. For some reason, this doesn't get a a added. And that's super lame. You think super in lame. play testing, that would be something yeah. that is brought up like, oh, hey, I had to like search your rule book. But that shows me there's a, a lack of playtesting. That shows they were only playtesting it with the three people that worked on the game. You know yeah. what I mean? And nobody outside of the playtest group asked the question. Or somebody said it and someone went, we don't want to waste time making that. And we don't want to spend the money to pay someone to do that. And we don't want to pay for the extra page to be printed and added to the rule book. Maybe they already sent it to the printer and someone yeah. brought that up. Who knows? But yeah. anyways, it seems very lame. Okay. But somebody on Board Game Geek in the file section for this, pay, for this game made uh, an index. Okay. Awesome sauce. And this is not really a big deal, but to help out with which monsters are which, I totally forgot I had this open oh. on the computer. Some other awesome person, maybe the same person, also made a, based on the retail, the one we have, the deluxe box or whatever, uh, where all the monsters are. So you could just print this out, put it beside your monster tray, and this will help you grab the monsters way faster, especially if they're all just gray plastic and look the same. Um, this exists in the Board Game Geek files. Do not ask me for a link. Go find it yourself because I did not put a link down below. I don't want to hear a comment. Please send me a link. I'm not sending you a link. Uh, maybe I'll add it to the comments later if I remember. But again, you have to be logged in to download them anyway. So just go to the website, log in, and, and find, the, uh, find the files. There might be newer and better ones by this time you're watching this too. Um, so yeah, so there could be a way be more beautiful index that you can like staple in your book or something. Uh, who knows? But this was awesome that somebody did this. And yeah, there is an FAQ for the game also I found on BGG which uh, answers a ton of questions for even the expansions. And some people made some awesome references. There are some uh, awesome booklets that people made on BGG to answer uh, for most forgotten rules for the base game and all the expansions. I'm definitely printing that out for when we do the expansions to remind myself to help me learn better. Right. And yeah, t go check out the file section on Board Game Geek for this game already. Like people have already made excellent tools there for you to make your game session Better, FYI. Um, the other thing, so the index was annoying, super annoying. We were trying to play our first game and look up rules mm -hmm. quickly. Right away, I was like, what the hell? There's no index? I didn't even notice it when I read through the book either. the first time. And then I was like, wait, what? I got super frustrated. I was pissed. I was like, really? Another big, expensive game that, that, that like a super obvious shortcut? Like, why? Why? Anyways, that's my one big annoyance. The second one, Okay, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's asked this question, and I'm sure someone asked during the crowdfunding, or when they looked at sleeves or something, but why the F does this game not use standard size cards for these cards at least, your action cards, okay? These cards are not the regular standard size cards, which we've learned to use from Magic the Gathering, any board game or card game that involves shuffling, uh, you know, discarding, drawing, like constantly handling cards. They chose to go with a card size that's only used in like 10 board games and a, a nine of them I've never heard of. One of them I have though, it's called Seven, uh, Seven Wonders, okay? Everyone knows what Seven Wonders is, right? They use the same cards I think that are in the most recent Seven Wonders, or maybe it's the oldest Seven Wonders, I don't know. But in Seven Wonders, they use cards that are 65 millimeters by 100 millimeters. This game decided that's the size it's going to use for everything. I'm okay with them using it for cards like these that they need to fit more story on. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, sorry, I should have used one that we've already seen. Um, I'm okay with them using bigger cards for these because I'm not handling these like crazy. I'm not shuffling them. They go back in a specific order or we can shuffle these gently. They don't get handled the whole game. You pick oh, them yeah. up, you read them, you put them down, right? Yeah. So I don't mind if cards with text like that, but literally there is this card. There is no text on here other than the name of card. So obviously they just wanted to show off their nice art and they went with a bigger size card. I don't know, maybe in their country where this game was designed, this is the standard there. I don't know. But every board game store, every website, I can find standard competitive card game sleeves from Magic the Gathering or 99% of board games that use cards. I can find 38 publisher or, or companies that make sleeves in that size. For this one, there are a handful of companies that make that size, but no story carries them because no games really use them. Okay. 
So when I started playing this game and realized the card stock wasn't the greatest, so I guess that's kind of like my third complaint, these cards feel like if I accidentally breathe on them, the ink is going to run off them because they feel very porous and they are missing a finish that should be on cards of this cost and this premium. But again, they put way too many cards in the game, which are awesome. It's a good thing to have lots of cards. But the problem is the cards aren't of a good quality and they feel like they would wear down. We already had ink rubbing off on our hands. Mm -hmm. um, but because the cards are bad quality, you want to sleeve them. But because they're not a standard size, you have to pay more for your sleeves and have to spend more time trying to find a store or a website that has enough sleeves to sleeve everything. And there's like a thousand cards. Okay. So this deck alone, this adventure deck in the base game is somewhere around a hundred cards. No, maybe, yeah, hundred. Plus every character has a starting 10 cards. So if you want to sleeve up these cards, oh, maybe it's like 200 total ish, like 210 ish 100. or 205 or something is this deck plus all five Witcher starting decks. So we were like, let's not go crazy and spend a ton of money on sleeves for a game we're not even sure we're going to like. But when I played once, I was like, man, I don't feel like I want to play with these cards or they're going to get ruined because they don't feel like premium cards. I've played with premium cards in many board games that cost less and some that cost more. And this is not premium cards, okay? The art on them, the graphic design is super premium. The thickness of the card stock's premium. But the feel of them, they feel so, like, not durable, okay? Like, not finished, like, like they, you said. It feels like they wanted to force you to buy a sleeve pack on a crowdfunding campaign. Was that offered? Uh, probably. I'm sure it was. But I'm sure on the next one, people are going to buy that sleeve pack set like, like it's going out of style because they're worried about their game durability. And yeah, you'll say, my game doesn't look like that. And we've played 10 times. I don't know. I, I call BS, but I, I've played enough games over the last 10 years. I, I feel like I know what I'm talking about, but I could be wrong. Maybe I'm, I'm being fooled. But when I felt them, I was like, man, this does not feel good. Um, which is fine because you can sleeve stuff. But when a game needs a thousand sleeves, that's a problem. Uh, and they're not a standard size. So that was annoying. So I literally went and, and again, some of my game stores could have been sold out of the sleeves. Some of our online retailers could have been sold out of cheaper versions of the sleeves because this game came out recently and maybe people are buying sleeves. Maybe Seven Wonders sells so many copies all the time, sleeves are hard to keep in stock. But I guarantee you, it is always going to be harder to find this size of sleeve for less price than the same company sleeve of a, lar a larger, of uh, the standard size. So it was very offensive to me, and I know this sounds silly, but this game that already is expensive for what it is, like it's not a very complex game, I don't know if it's very replayable, I haven't played it enough yet, but this base game, for the price you're paying, you have to add in, if you want this game to survive long enough, you will probably have to add in, it's just opinion, I don't know, I'm, I haven't put it through the science tests yet, but if you want to sleeve this game, it is going to cost you quite a pretty penny to sleeve all the card count in this game, which is, uh, if you pass me the book, you can probably find the answer right here, right? Uh, yeah, so every starting Witcher has 10 of these cards. Uh, oh, there's 90 action cards, so 90 plus 50. And then if you want to start shuffling, uh, sleeving potions, that's 28. If you want to sleeve these, it's 36 and 36. I sleeve the monster cards, which is 20 more. Maybe that's what I was adding in. So for me, I felt like because the monsters are going to be fighting a lot, I want to sleeve those. Yeah. And I want to sleeve these because we're constantly handling and shuffling them. These, we only shuffle at setup once. These should never be shuffled. And these only get shuffled at setup once. And these should never be handled or shuffled or just grabbed. So yeah. in my mind, these are the most offensive cards. That's 90 plus 50, 140. 140 cards you need to find sleeves for. Not that bad. I guess plus these. Plus those maybe. Yeah, so like 160. But I'm not even talking like expansions. Like I'm being cheap just sleeving these. But if we start throwing in expansions and you guys want me to buy other expansions and play those, now I got to buy more sleeves. And I got to find the same brand of sleeves. So if my store only had two packs of these sleeves, and now I have to find the same brand or else the sleeves don't match, and OCD will kick in and we'll go crazy. But the fact that they just don't use standard cards in a board game that has this many cards that are being handled and shuffled in a deck building game, if you don't use standard size cards, you are a jerk. You are a jerk. You literally wasted my time, cost me more money, frustrated the hell out of me, what the F? What's the point of that? And the, and the big offense is I would be super happy if the card was a standard size card 
that are a, a card like this that was full of text that explained abilities and rules on it and had stats all over it and cool art and and cool borders and graphic design but they're not these cards literally have nothing on them they have a stupid symbol here a title a cost and and maybe some symbols up here you tell me you couldn't make that like uh you know a few millimeters shorter and make it standard card size what the heck is that why just so they could show your art you paid all the money for Silly, 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 silly. Don't get me wrong, it feels nice to hold bigger cards being six foot four and having big hands. I appreciate it that they didn't go with the tiny cards because you could have done you could have done yeah. super mini Euro or mini American size cards with these stats and this art. You could have gone small cards, okay? Thank you for not going tiny cards. But why am I hunting down rare types of sleeves for a game that's a deck building game that has nothing on the cards? That was my biggest annoyance, okay? Biggest annoyance. Uh, and that's all I got for you, okay? So if that doesn't matter to you, then this game is pretty ballin'. But again, the replayability I'm a little worried about. But again, there's expansions. And we already have expansions because they're included with our Kickstarter. But we still paid for those. We paid for shipping. We waited for delays. We paid extra for our game because we got it through crowdfunding. Hopefully those expansions spice it up and make a more complex replayable game that we kind of more enjoy which i'm assuming and mm -hmm. also one of them makes it co-op yeah which i'm excited for i want to try it solo still so again this is just my initial thoughts two playthroughs on the base game i think it's a pretty solid game with a couple annoyances that's all i got yeah i think it's a solid game too i like it yeah i very much like it i very much want to play more i can't wait to show kyle i can't wait to show some family and friends and i can't wait to stream it some more so if you're interested in more streams hit the like button subscribe Click on notify me on the next streams when they get scheduled, uh, which will be in a couple weeks just because we are going to Gen Con. So, um, yeah, we won't be here playing this. But if I wasn't at Gen Con next week, I'd be streaming more of this next week because I do want to explore more of it and I want to dabble with expansions. Um, and I've already looked at the expansions at my local game store and was already put them on a wish list. But I don't know if I'll play them. I'm going to see how the first few streams do because I don't want to go investing in expansions for a game that nobody cares to watch us play on the channel. So we'll see kind of how those episodes work. Um, but if you like what you see, hit the like button because it helps other people find the channel and watch the videos and stuff. So that'll also entice us to play more, uh, if that makes sense. If that makes sense. And again, full disclosure, we were not provided this game by the publisher. We weren't paid to play this other than uh, donations from you guys. Thank you for supporting the channel up here. Thank you for these people allowing us to play games, be kind of independent, do what we want. Uh, so yeah, we appreciate it. So it's Rob's game and say, well, I just kind of decide what I want to play, but also you guys kind of help me with, you know, what you're watching, what you're liking, you know, sharing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what you're more interested in sways me in what I want to keep playing. But I do want to experience a little more of this, but I don't know if I want to buy expansions yet. So just keep that in mind. I'm not made of money. I'm just a gamer like you guys. Keep that in mind, okay? Just keep that in mind, all right? Because that money that I could buy to expand this game and try to make it better, end up spending like $400 when all is said and done to make a decent game. Uh, that I want to keep playing. I could spend that extra $200 that I could spend on expansions on a completely different game. So we'll see, we'll see. So just keep that in mind. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Dan Roberts says, I'm a serial sleever and bought a few hundred for this game, but my stock of 63 by 88 weren't needed. That was a bummer. Yeah, like who doesn't have extra standard size sleeves lying around who's a board gamer or a card gamer, right? I have mm -hmm. tons. I have tons. I was shocked and I didn't know until I went to put a sleeve on a card and went, what the frig? Like, you don't even notice they're bigger. No. I didn't notice when I first played. And then when I went to sleeve it, I was like, what the hell? No way these aren't standard size cards. Like, they're not even that much bigger. It's just done to be annoying. Like, I, I don't know the other reason behind it. It feels like they just went, you know what? Let's be annoying. Let's make people want to buy sleeves that they don't normally buy. I don't understand. I don't understand. It just makes no sense. It makes the board bigger too. The board's bigger, and that's one of my complaints. The game's a big table hog. The board's way too big. But I do like how it looks table presence wise and how it organizes everything. But man, now that I think if the cards were normal size, maybe we would shave an inch or two off the board. Salvor says bigger cards equals better game. <laughs> that's I guess right. it's subjective, right? That's Some right. people my doesn't bother. Not only is my deck bigger than your deck, the cards in it are bigger, right? Or is it not the size of the deck? It's the girth of the card. I forget what the saying is. Anyways, you know what? I mean. Anyways, these, these are serious, serious discussions from geek board gamers. <laughs> Dan
Okay, and says, no one wakes up and says, you know what, let's, you know what? let's be annoying except me. <laughs> no, no, I do it too. <laughs> <laughs> Who can I piss off today? Let's see. Ah, let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. Yeah, no index. I know, I can't believe it. Yeah. I was like shocked. And then I was like, oh, I'll just go to the table of contents, at least to find where fighting is, you know, or the player turn is. Nope, that's not in there either. So then I'm flipping pages. Like, why am I flipping pages every time? Then I got to leave the rule book open, but then I need to go to a different page. It's like, I, I then debated, do I get those little post-it notes and start sticking them out the side oh, yeah. for the cat for the categories, right? Yeah. If your rule book's like 10 to 14 pages, that's fine. You can skip that if you want. But once it gets like over 30, I feel like you need to have an index or at least a table of contents. But yeah. But again, I think this publisher's only made like one board game before. So again, it for a Ma and Pa board game who's also spending money on an IP, uh, it's pretty nice. This go on board, I don't know, it's pretty nice. But again, they made millions and millions of dollars. So at least they didn't just take that to the casino. Uh, obviously, they did spend it on the IP and the art and the minis and all that stuff. But yeah, they made a pretty good game. Yeah, I think. it's a solid game is what I feel. They, they basically made a, a simple but very high produced beautiful game which mm -hmm. is nice yeah uh which i appreciate let's see ultra violetta says i was the weirdo that got the card sleeve add on but i'm jealous you 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 yeah it was smart i didn't know I, if i knew during the crowdfunding campaign just to save my sanity i probably would have bought that card sleeve pack because i knew it was a deck builder i didn't know how big the deck was going to be and i assume expansions are always going to expand the deck in a deck building game and make it a monster of a deck right and if i knew that it was special card size but it didn't look that way in videos and stuff i didn't it didn't click to me i would have bought it but like i don't read every update on kickstarter i don't read all the fine print i don't follow every update i ignore all the emails like you know you need to stay right at the top this game has special cards and they're larger but then they don't want to scare people away right because people might get pissed by that that you basically they might feel like they have to buy the sleeves but that's what it feels like. It feels like it was made so that you have to buy the sleeves. I don't know. It's kind of lame. But I don't know. That's that's me. But again, it's not a deal breaker. It just was annoying. Like, an annoyance. That's all. Yeah, I'm sure there's so many people that, out there that are not even going to sleeve it at all and play it and have a great time. Yeah, again, most of us don't play a game more than a handful of times, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you wear off some of the art on the card, who cares? Who cares? Uh... I also noticed one thing I liked about the game too, I should have mentioned, is when we played it, even learning game, it was a lot quicker than I expected. Oh yeah, it was. So this playthrough did take a while because we're explaining everything, we're having fun with the chat and stuff, but I looked at it and was like, no way this game is like a 90 to, you know, a, a two hour kind of game, but it was. Mm -hmm. Even our first game learning, but again, that's because it's simple and we play lots of games like this before, I think. Yeah. But the game flew, especially at two players. So I like the flow of the game. I should point that out. The game flow is nice. It also stays within its time limit. And unless players want to keep pushing it, I guess, you could kind of make it take forever. Yeah, but if someone's pushing it... Yeah, there's a race, right? Yeah, someone's then gonna you're going to have to push it too or else yeah. you're going to lose. I mean, someone's pushing like the length of the, the end of the game away. Like oh. you're just going everywhere and trying to get all your stats up and you're taking your sweet time. But unless everyone at the table is doing Yeah, that. that's true. Yeah, you could lose out. Uh, Ultra V Letter does say, to be fair, the card sleeves they offered were nice and thick. Sleeving all the base game cards makes it barely fit into the card tray insert. Oh, I bet. Mm -hmm. I don't, I didn't, yeah, the insert's okay, but yeah, I can see how that could be annoying. Uh, no, Kyle's not going to Gen Con. He went one time, but I, I don't think he'll ever go again, just because that was before he had a whole family and everything, so. Uh, I don't think that's possible anymore. No, we do carry our own stuff, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we carry our own stuff. We're we're independent. We're running around the con like chickens with our heads cut off usually and yeah. doing our own thing. Um, but yeah. Oh no, I'm not saying donate more money because sleeves are annoying and expensive. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I don't have to sleeve it. Because honestly, like it looks better on stream when I don't sleeve the cards. I get less uh studio light reflection and stuff. So I prefer not to sleeve, but then I like, in a deck building game, I like to fidget with my cards, shuffle them aggressively, shuffle the deck on setup really quickly, and uh, so it's nice having sleeves on cards for that. Mm -hmm. It just sucks that, like, they're not standard. I don't mind the sleeving part, because I spent tons of money on sleeves over the years. I'm not asking you to help me pay for sleeves, 
but it's just like, why are they not the right, like a normal size? Because it's so close, right? It's just so close. And Asmodee, what the hell is with Seven Wonders needing bigger cards? I haven't even played it uh, since the version we played 10 years ago. But I'm now going to play the dual one, whatever that one. Oh, yeah, true. So now I'm going to buy Seven Wonders just so I can bitch about the size of the cards in Seven Wonders and send angry emails to Asmodee also. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways. <laughs> I know it was a joke, see, Mitch. I know it was a joke. <laughs> I know you're joking. I know. No, no. But I just need to be clear because maybe someone read it and didn't think it was a joke. You know, I just want to be clear. Anyways, thank you for watching. We're going to get out of here. Uh, thank you for your support. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for playing along. Thanks for the rules lookups. Thanks for uh, correcting us. Um, thanks to Mel for painting. No problem. Yeah, thanks for just hanging out with us on a Saturday, having some fun. Um, tomorrow, we are back. At 11 a.m. Should I bump it to 12? Because it's like kind of early for West Coast stream, uh, West Coast. It's completely up to you. It is a U.S. focused convention. I should probably put it to noon. To noon? Yeah. I think I put it to 11 if it was on the Monday. Yeah, because we need to do But it. on a Sunday morning, expecting, you know, uh, someone on the West Coast of Canada or the U.S. to roll out of bed for us. I can't do that. So uh, tomorrow's stream, I'm going to move it to noon, but we are going to talk about games that we're looking forward to at Gen Con, and we'll do it live. We'll do it with you guys. So if you have any games that we should probably look at, or you think we might like, or should be interested in, or should check out a demo, or should ignore completely or avoid, join us for that stream. Give us your thoughts. It's a two-way street here. It's a two-way street. We're doing it live. Um, so Mel and I are each, Mel's already looked at some of the lists. Mm -hmm. I've looked at some of the lists. We're separately making our list, but then we'll kind of talk a little bit about it. Yeah, because I'm sure there's some overlaps, I can guarantee. Yeah, but then we're going to come on tomorrow and we're going to talk about which games we've noticed that we're kind of like interested in. We're either walking really fast to grab, we want a demo, we're just happy to see there, uh, or maybe get because we can't find them in Canada and want to bring them back. Um, so yeah, let's just hang out. We'll talk about Gen Con a little bit uh, for the fourth time this year on stream. So if you're looking for information about Gen Con, we do have a playlist. Go check out the main page. I think it's on the front page or in the playlist section or just search Rob's Gaming Table Gen Con. Uh, you'll find it, but we did some Gen Con planning, preparation, tips, videos, uh, streams with everybody, uh, which were fun. So this is like the fourth stream to finish it off before we go to Gen Con. And hopefully we get to stream from Gen Con again this year. But again, I don't know the Wi-Fi situation. Um, but I do have a, a SIM card I bought, so I should have unlimited data. But I've been there some years in the cell phone networks that get overloaded because so many people all in the same couple blocks of Indianapolis that it's some of the reception is sucky. But uh, we'll try to stream from there like we did last year and stay in touch. But if you're interested in uh, the games there, join us tomorrow on stream for a couple hours as we go over that. Uh, Rob, please check out the meme I put on Discord. It's been a while. Oh, I don't know that he means right this minute, but... I logged into Discord yesterday. Matt, it's going to be at noon Eastern tomorrow. Yeah, We're going gonna... to move it to noon Eastern tomorrow. I I'll change it right this minute, actually, so I don't forget. Because I have, it, I think I put it for eleven on Monday, but then I just moved the date. But I, I just realized I probably didn't ch change it. Means time. I get to sleep in. Nice. You always sleep in. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's noon Eastern. I don't know what time that is for you. You have to do that on your own. Which time zone are you in, Matt? Uh, Matt, what time is it for you right now? I think he's like two hours. All right, I changed it. CST, so Central Standard Time, so you're one hour behind. Oh, one hour. So it will be 11 a.m. for you. It's going to happen, but 12 for us and nine on the West Coast and 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Right? Is that all right? Does that sound right? I think so. Um, so yeah, so join us tomorrow. You can already set a notification for it. Just go check out the live stream on the main page. It's the only stream that's scheduled right now. You can set a notify me link, uh, click it and you'll get a reminder when it starts. It's 1 PM for AST. Atlantic standard time. Is that what that one is? I don't know what that one is. I know like, uh, PEI is like a 1.5 hour difference, right? Like 1.5 ahead or something weird like that. That one always threw me off whenever I needed to call somebody there. It was like weird. No, Ultra V Letter, we just don't care about anyone that's uh, beyond Quebec. <laughs> Ultra
all of Canada, all of us in Canada from Ontario and, or sorry, from Quebec all the way to the West, uh, we completely forget about everyone in the East and also everyone in uh, Manitoba. See, Mitch, I love... Wait, I just lost a bunch of subscribers. What happened? <laughs> See, Mitch, I love this. It says, I love 15 minutes from CST. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, We are... No, I'm just kidding. I was going to say how, how far for the next time zone, but I don't even know. I'm that is kidding. so funny. Yes, I know Atlantic Standard Time. I know. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's in my mind. I was thinking, like, our, our area... And then I'm thinking uh, west to Gen Con, and then everyone coming from uh, the west side east to Gen Con, and how I'm worried about that audience all around Gen Con. That's where my mind was going with that. So I was trying to cover all the time zones I know of people who travel to Gen Con, but I do know people that travel from east of me, but most of them are in Quebec, to be honest. Like all our friends from our old Game of Thrones, oh, yeah. the card game metas from Montreal and Quebec City and stuff. We miss you guys. Hopefully we'll see some of you at Gen Con. Our French, our French friends, we miss you. There's a giant thing called Ontario somewhere. I, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Somewhere. It's in Canada, I heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kate doesn't know. She Kate, Kate only knows uh, steaks and uh, oil. That's that's all Kate knows. Kate Kate's from the Texas of Canada, where they don't know anything other than steaks and oil. I'll, I'll never forget that. I went, I went for work out there and met a guy and asked him, I was like, I had some computer parts and I was like, hey, where's the recycling for these parts? Like, let's make sure these batteries and components from these servers get recycled. And the guy looked at me and was like, <laughs> Rob, we don't care about recycling here in Alberta. Oh, no. He's like, it's, we're the Texas of Canada. It's all, we only care about steaks and uh, oil. We, we don't care about the environment. And he walked away and I was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> Really? <laughs> and then I asked somebody later, and they're like, yeah, he's accurate. But that was also like 10 years ago, just FYI. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? That's a thing? But anyways, I'm only joking. I'm just being a troll. Uh, Kate says, I would be offended, but that's honestly really true. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. But I've had steak there, and it's great. And I washed it down with some oil, and it was also great. <laughs> Uh, but anyways <laughs> anyways thank you all for watching i ultraviolet uh you know you know i'm just messing around more dice by my name oh that's what you unjoined oh i get it i get it anyways no worries thank you all we're hanging out and we'll see you in the next stream tomorrow hopefully and for those that don't care about gen con we'll see you when we get back or we'll see you from there. But if they don't care about Gen Con, maybe they don't care about that either. No, no. But you might not care about... Oh, no. They well... Probably, a lot of people do care about what games come out at Gen yeah, Con. Yeah, maybe what's they're there. still interested in that. Yeah, because a lot of games get released there. Mm -hmm. And then they come out later to their stores or around the same time even. Or just curious about what we've seen and what we're doing while we're there. Sorry, I should rephrase that. If you care about board games, join us tomorrow as we talk about board games. See how I trick them? Mm -hmm. And then... Join us throughout the next week. Hopefully we're making videos and streaming from Gen Con, where it's all about games. And then when we get back, we'll be back to playing more games. So tune in for that. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye-bye.